We'll see who's going to get off to the fastest start. For Brentford, it's about making sure they're still in the Premier League next season. While Manchester United want to make sure they're back playing in Europe's elite competition. All to play for. Sit back and enjoy this one with former Charlton and Chelsea defender Scott Minto. Alongside your match commentator here at TalkSport, Nigel Adley. Thank you, Faye. Good evening once again. The clocks go forward tonight. And Brentford would love to fast forward to the end of the season if it meant Premier League survival. It's become a real grind and they need big moments from their main players. United have been a moment team all season. Some great, some awful. And they do now need they now need help from others to avoid a lingering sense of failure this season. A reminder of the two teams once again. Two changes for Brentford. Yarmul Yuk and Lewis Potter come into the side. Onyeka is on the bench and Reguillon is suspended. It is Flecken in goal. Jorgensen, Collins and I are the back three. Rolleslev, Janelt, Yarmul Yuk, Jensen and Lewis Potter across midfield with Visser and Tony in attack. United, Anana in goal, Dallo, Lindelof, Varane and Wan-Bissaka. McTominay and Mainu in midfield, Garnacho, Fernandez and Rashford behind Hoyland. Lissandro Martinez and Casemiro back on the bench for United and Brian and Buemo will be an attacking option for Brentford later on in the evening as well. And really, Scott, getting Embuemo and Tony on the field together again has got to be a major example of what Thomas Frank needs to do in the remainder of the season. Absolutely. They're, they're the key players up front, Nigel. Of that, there's no doubt. Ivan Tony. And again, you know, how will he respond? I thought he was superb, as we talked about in that game against Belgium. Now take that into your club form, where we, you're probably not going to be there next season, but make sure they are safe. In Bermo coming off the bench would be very, very key. But I do think defensively, they have to shore up. As I said before, you can't concede two goals in every game, how they've been in the last 18 games, and expect to win a match. And it's United in their black and white striped away kit who will get the match underway. Brentford in their famous red and white stripes, black shorts and black socks. It has been a dramatic day in the Premier League. Goals galore, matches in the balance right to the very end. And we finish with a game here at the GTEC Community Stadium, which means so much to both ends of the table. Brentford in real danger of relegation. Manchester United hoping for a place in the Champions League once again. And they get the match underway. And it's back with Andre Anana. Defending the goal away to our right in the first half. His long ball forward is flicked on by McTominay. Rodeslip will go back to Fleck in the Dutch international in goal for Brentford. His long clearance downfield is nodded back by Baran and eventually cleared away by Aya on the edge of the penalty area. Brentford going with a back three. They've lost 13 of their 18 games this season with a back three, but only four of 11 when they played a back four. But Thomas Frank clearly trusting the process as they look to bring the ball forward now with Yarmulyuk on the far side. A rare opportunity for the Ukrainian under-21 international. In the end, it's worked all the way back to Flecken. And it's a high ball over the top, looking for Tony. He was tangling with Dallow. And it's gathered once again by Lindelof just in front of us. Yeah, nothing much to report, really, is it? Just two teams feeling each other out, not really getting three, four, five passes together, which is just what United are trying to, to do now. I wouldn't be surprised to see that ball go from Flecken to Tony. And Tony, just try and, you know, out-muscle the central defenders of United. United looking to play out as they did so here last season when it really cost them and this time it works because Miner was able to wriggle away from the challenge and find Rashford who clips a deflected ball forward which is cut out by Jorgensen on the edge of the penalty area now Jensen who scored in the defeat for Brentford at Old Trafford back in October they led that game for so long before Scott McTominay came on very late in the day and scored twice in added time really in many ways summing up United's season yeah absolutely and I'll tell you what just interested to see how Kobe Maynard would respond after what was a sensational international break well, not really a break but playing really well in those two games he just received the ball with, with one of the Brentford players on him and he just did that pirouette that he did to Joao Gomez in the game against Brazil it was interesting, Anana still trying to play out. 
Brentford still trying to press, but he's playing that well at the moment. He fancies himself. Tony flicks on into the penalty area. Visser is involved. Now Lewis Potter down the left-hand side for Brentford. Looking to twist and turn away from Dallo. Has support from Jan Wiljok. And Jan Wiljok's done well down the left. Breaks into the penalty area. Pulls it back towards the near post. Mainu with a clearance which doesn't make the distance. An acrobatic overhead kick from Visser is blocked. And United will finally clear. And now they can break. Fernandez with an excellent ball forward. Here is Rashford now. Left-hand side of the penalty area. Hoyland in support. Rashford carries the ball a long way. Now needs support, or does he? Back to the edge of the penalty area. Fernandez with a right foot shot. Drags it wide. And that was a chance. Brilliant. I mean, end-to-end already, isn't it? Brentford getting down to the byline. Cutting the ball back. United defenders really read that well. Expecting that cut back rather than the, the whip across the six-yard box and then suddenly they counter-attack Rasmus Hoyland holding the ball up really well and then just playing it in behind for Marcus Rashford I have to say Brentford defenders did really well they doubled up on him didn't allow him to come inside but he held the ball up laid it back to Bruno Fernandes who had the first time shot it just went wide but I'll tell you what it's already an open game Three minutes played here on Talk Sport at the GTEC Community Stadium in West London Brentford nil Manchester United nil in the Premier League, so many late goals today in our 12.30 commentary on Talk Sport, beginning game day at St James's Park, Newcastle 3-1 down with seven minutes of normal time to play, beat West Ham 4-3, Seamus Coleman with an added time own goal, gifting Brentford, or rather Bournemouth the victory against Everton, and Burnley twice coming from behind with ten men to draw at Chelsea as Bruno Fernandes comes forward down the right-hand side, but his ball into the penalty area. It's closed down, cleared by Collins. Visser just unable to gather. And now Lindelof will bring it forward again for United. Fernandes takes over. Further wide to the far side. And Garnacho. And United just trying to gather some poise on the ball here after what's been a frenetic start. Four minutes played. Also today, Palace drawing 1-1 at Forest. Fulham coming from 3-1 down late on to draw at Sheffield United and Son scoring a very late winning goal for Spurs to beat Luton coming from behind it means United are nine points behind Spurs with this game in hand here tonight and 12 points behind Aston Villa with two games in hand but at the moment they are the outsiders in what looks to be a three horse race for fourth or possibly fifth in the Champions League yeah, I'd say at the moment it's a two and a half horse race yes. I think United aren't quite in it they need to go on a fantastic run and that's why tonight is so important Keen Lewis Potter coming forward now for Brentford high diagonal ball into the area looking for Tony and Juan Basaka was aware of the danger in the vicinity rises to head the ball behind for a corner oh dear but he's gone down Ivan Tony hasn't he I think he was caught by Juan Basaka as he leapt there to head the ball away yeah he did really well I'm not quite sure the two of them looked as if they came close maybe that Wambasaka came down I just think he's kind of twisted it as he's turned he's realising Wambasaka's going to get there there's a, there's a little bit of a call it hill but just a, a decline isn't it once the, the goal line goes and I wonder whether he just wasn't expecting it there and it looks as if he's in a little bit of pain but he will carry on Ivan Tony hobbles back into the six yard area Matthias Jensen will take the corner kick on this near side with his fair hair swept back by an Alice band here on what is a beautiful evening for football very still very dry although the temperature is dropping we'll see what Tony can do here in his mobility as he attacks the first corner of the game for Brentford with Jensen will take an outswing high to the far post Tony rising and it was a free header in the end but he glances it well wide of the far post it was it was a great ball in you can see they worked at that. Ivan Tony. He just kind of holds his line, really. And it's Marcus Rashford who's picking him up. Or not. Or not, yes, absolutely. And it, you know, look, it was a free header, but it was one that came at him pretty quickly. But he's able to, to look at it from distance. He should be getting a better connection on that and at least hitting the target. The long clearance downfield from Anana. Janelt. And then Rudoslav tried to clear the ball away and in the end it's gathered by Juan Basaka playing on the left of the United back four he is the sixth different left back used by United this season they've also had 11 different central defensive pairings due to injuries and only Brighton have used 
more defensive combinations than both of tonight's sides and it's also been a real issue for Brentford they've shuffled around between the back three and the back four but Ethan Pinnock I think remains a massive miss for yeah, them he does I think he's a really strong player for them very good player indeed adds balance adds height Ben Mee obviously and then you've got the, the two full backs or wing backs who have been injured as well Rico Henry's a player I really like and Brentford a team who have lost 12 of their last 15 games and injuries have been a problem and of course Ivan Tony has come back into the side after his suspension but is currently five games without a goal as Visser looks to close down Varane on the edge of the penalty area he hammers the ball away Garnaccio with the peroxide rinse on the far side tries to keep the ball in play but it's played over the top again by Collins on the far side but United will win it back eight minutes played here on Talk Sport in the Premier League in West London on a Saturday night and it's Brentford nil Manchester United nil until your commentator then Nigel just one you talking about the Alice band the other one peroxide rinse as well yeah I've got neither by the way <laughs> here is Hoyland coming forward and it's headed away eventually by McTominay as Brentford tried to clear and now Lindell up on the edge of the penalty area through again towards Mainu does well to pick out Hoyland who lays it wide to Garnaccio McTominay takes over high diagonal ball wide to the left hand side to find Rashford Juan Basaka on the overlap but it's a 1-2 between Fernandez and Rashford who tries to play it into the penalty area for Hoyland but it's swept away by Ayer but United will win the ball back and Brentford very deep here at the moment as McTominay plays it wide to the far side and Dallow and Brentford have every single red and white striped shirt behind the ball at the moment. I'm not surprised. I think if United are playing the ball out from the back, they'll try and press high and create the mistake. And once United get the ball into midfield, they will just drop in and get 11 behind the ball. Bruno Fernandes wide towards Juan Basaka. Good ball around the corner from the fullback. And then the back heel from Fernandes strikes Jorgensen and bobbles out to play on this near side for a United throw in. And they've never been higher than sixth in the Premier League this season 15 wins only 2 draws and 11 losses and they've only scored fewer goals at this stage of the season once in the last 33 years and that was one of the seasons under Louis van Gaal we have to say it has been a horrendous season really and yet if they were to win the FA Cup or if they were to finish top 5 and that's enough for Champions League that would be a great ending to it now Visser coming forward for Brentford he's got space and Tony to the right hand side Tony now gathers back towards Jensen Tony will try and make his way into the penalty area further back towards Jorgensen and now Rulerslev Jensen again Rulerslev on the overlap Jensen with a high ball to the far post Lewis Potter does well to head it down for Jarmul Juk inside the penalty area and now Potter again will try and take on Dallo back towards Jarmul Juk Collins is forward but his ball on the edge of the penalty area headed away by Garnacho. Collins then does well to come back and nod the ball down and Jensen will gather on the edge of the penalty area maybe thought about the shot but here is Rolislev to the right an excellent cross into the penalty area headed away at the far post by Varane with Tony leaping just in front of him now Hoyland on the edge of the penalty area Kobe Miner with an excellent ball forward Bruno Fernandez wide to this near side and Garnacho. Rashford is waiting down the centre. Brentford could be caught out here. Garnacho on the edge of the penalty area. Tries to play it back towards Fernandez. It was short, but Fernandez comes in with a challenge on Jensen. No free kick according to Simon Hooper. Now, Mainu on the edge of the penalty area. Juan Basaka further wide to the left. And Garnacho. And now, Mainu again. Finding Fernandez at walking pace, 20 yards out. He slips it straight into the path of Matthias Jensen and Brentford will try and clear. We've played 11 minutes here on Talk Sport. It's 0 0, and here's Scott Minter. Yeah, I just think United, when they do get the ball, they've got to try and look forward quicker. But once you let Brentford get into position, very difficult team to break down when they've got 11 behind the ball. You can see how hard they are working. Just a couple of very minor things, though it might not end up being minor. Marcus Rashford did go back with Roslev but it just allowed him to get the cross in and it was a dangerous cross headed well out by the United defence he's got to get tighter if he's going to stop that cross coming in and Kobe Maynard already he's just one or two touch plays his vision and his technique 
It is superb, it really is. He's playing the game at his pace. Well, there should be goals here tonight. There have been 54 at the GTEC so far this season in the Premier League. Villa Park and Bramall Lane are the only stadiums to have a higher total in the Premier League. And Bramall Lane saw six more today. But there's only been one clean sheet at home for Brentford. But the flip side of that, Arsenal are the only side not to concede here in the Premier League this season from the visitors. Now Varane clips it wide to the far side. And Garnaccio, there is space for him to try and attack Lewis Potter, who shows him the inside. Janelt then comes across to make a solid challenge, and the German will try and clear, but he's got support further back now from Lewis Potter. Slipped into the path of Yarmulyuk, and now Janelt again. The Brentford crowd rather urging their team to move the ball a bit quicker through midfield. Here is Jan out now with the ball over the top, seeking out Visser, who was heavily outnumbered, and it's one bounce into the arms of Onana. Yeah, look, the crowd obviously want you to try and get forward as much as possible, but that's why you don't just do it, because it, the ball wasn't on. And it was trying to be inch perfect. In the end, it went straight to Onana, and you, you give the ball away. If it's on, yes, go forward. But if it isn't, that's when you keep the passes going and try and open up the defence. Now wan Saka, wide to this near side. And Rashford, 13 minutes play, goalless so far. Garnacho again on the edge of the penalty area. Bruno Fernandes back towards Rashford, who tries to shrug off a challenge back in field towards Bruno Fernandes. Does well with this back to goal to find Dallow with a shot, which is deflected behind off Collins, and it will be United's first corner. Well, I think that might be a way for United because they're dropping so deep, Brentford, and making it so difficult for these little one twos for Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford and Rasmus Hoyland as well once they drop back there's got to be someone who's there on the edge of the box ready for the shot this time it was Darlow you see he looked to the sky because he felt that was going in very good block in the end but United very much on the front foot right now corner kick which Bruno Fernandes will take on the far side the United right, it's an outswinger towards that near post. Powerful leap from Janelt to clear. Garnacho will try and bring it down on the edge of the penalty area. He loses possession, but it's quickly recovered by Dallow. Now Rashford curls the high cross in. Once again, it's not a clear by Collins this time. Straight back towards Rashford, but the challenge comes in from Jensen. And it will be a throw in to United on this near side. You're listening to Brentford nil. Manchester United nil on Talk Sport with now. Don't forget the with now. You can stream all the Sky Sports action like Brentford against Manchester United live right now, contract free with a now membership. Search now sports. Wambasaka will take the throw in on this near side. In towards Minu. And Minu knocks it off Jorgensen. Maybe thought about trying to get the corner kick, but Brentford will eventually clear. Visado has given the ball straight to. Varane, but it's all a bit frenetic, all a bit pinball in the midfield at the moment. Yeah, but to be fair, it's United who's on top. They're the one who is pressing and not letting Brentford try and get any passes in at all. Now Rashford, down the left-hand side, finding Kobe Minu onto his right foot, heading towards the right. And now Bruno Fernandes with the cross in, looking for Hoyland, who controls the ball with his back to goal. Can he get the shot in? I think in the end he almost took the ball away from McTominay, who was steaming in. It's cleared away. Tony is fouled by Varane, and Brentford have a free kick midway inside their own half. Yeah, he did, but I think that's, again, that's United's best way at the moment, because it's so difficult. You, you, you don't, if you don't get to the, the byline and sort of cut the ball back, if you just whip crosses in or even just hang them in, this, this back three of Brentford will be able to deal with that to get the ball into Hoyland or to Rashford and lay the ball back and have a shot from 20 yards Lewis Potter now coming forward down the left hand side fires in the cross which is way over hit three bounces straight out of play on this near side and it will be a throw into United and that's a waste for Brentford to get the ball in that sort of area and do nothing with it absolutely they've hardly got into the, the final third of United so when you do especially Lewis Potter that's where he wants to be he's not a wing back he doesn't want to be defending all the time he wants to get forward playing almost like a left winger he was in that position so once you get that half a yard you've got to put the quality balls in especially when you've been on the pressure like Brentford have and the poor clearance on this near side from United Jorgensen plays it into the penalty area Vissa tries to dart away from the challenge of Wambasaka pull back for Tony and in the end it was a crucial intervention from Lindelof which was probably a goal saving intervention and the ball will scramble behind for a Brentford corner well, again, you know, this, this time it's Brentford pinning in United. There's a bit of pinball and fair play to Vissava getting there first. He whips the ball back. 
It's one of those, especially from where we're sitting, Nigel. I'm thinking, is that going in? But it's, it's gone wide by about five yards. It's a really important tackle. Was it Tony there waiting? He was lurking. Corners play short to Janelt. Left footed ball, high to the far post. Nodded by Tony into the penalty area. It's loose and then slashed high over the top. It was another opportunity inside the penalty area for Lewis Potter, but it was deflected behind. Good spell here for Brentford, and they have another corner. It's the best spell of the game for them, and that is no doubt. Good ball in, as I say, they've got the height. It's a really good block in the end from Rafa Varane. 17 minutes played, nil-nil, but the home side have the wind in their sails here. Jensen over the corner kick, down their right. Attacking the goal away to our right. And this time it will be a longer delivery, high into the penalty area. And it evades the aerial duel between Tony and Mainu. But it's a high ball back into the penalty area from Yarmul Yuk towards the far post. Jorgensen challenging with Bruno Fernandes. And the ball just strikes the shoulder of the United captain and goes behind for another Brentford corner here. They did well there, Bruno. There must be a foot difference between the two. I thought Jorgensen actually could have been a little bit stronger. Barely got off the ground, did he? Yeah. There was a lot of snow coming down on the ball as well, wasn't there? So he had time to, to really come onto it. Janelt from the short corner, back towards Jensen. Excellent cross into the penalty area, headed away again by Varane. Straight back towards Jensen. Janelt pokes it further infield. It's claimed here by Yarmulyuk. Midway inside the United half. Wide to the right-hand side again. Jensen riding the challenge of Bruno Fernandes. Janelt tries to slip it down the line. Jensen has robbed Bruno Fernandes. Fires the ball in. And it's tipped away at the near post by Anana. It's still loose inside the six-yard area. And eventually the ball back in towards goal is hammered away by Juan Basaka. And now Hoyland with a defensive header, which eventually drops to Tony inside the penalty area. And it was Ayer, the central defender, still forward, looking to get the shot in. Now Visser, 25 yards out. Chaos on the edge of the United penalty area here Visser now looks to turn the crowd urging Brentford on Tony is fouled by Dallow right on the edge of the penalty area wide on the left hand side and it's a free kick and that all came from a wafer thin challenge from Bruno Fernandes on this near side yeah well look he defended well in the first place but and he got his body there and, and then he was <laughs> like wafer thin just shoved off the ball it, was a, it wasn't the best of crosses coming in but they were able to, to keep it going Brentford as I say, just in the last five or so minutes, they've been really good, the home side. Now it's United on the back foot. Now they need to make sure they keep the clean sheet the next five, ten minutes. Nearly 20 minutes played. Nil-nil. A free kick wide on the left-hand side, but Ivan Tony may fancy this. He's over it with Vitaly Janelt. And United have now pulled every single player back behind this free kick. All of the outfield players are within 25 yards of the United goal here I'd want to see my big boys at the back just trying to get on the end of it if he is going to shoot he's going to whipping it in well Tony waves away Janelt and it's played short and then Tony hammers it in low and it deflects away off Bruno Fernandes and it's a Brentford corner down their left this time yeah fair play to Bruno there he's the one who came out it's a quick pass the ball in touch stop it have a shot and by the time that happened, Bruno Fernandes had come out and had defended well. Janelt will take the corner kick in front of those United fans, all on their feet, all in good voice on the far side. Nearly 21 minutes played here on Talk Sport. Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. Janelt's corner in towards Tony, but it's over his head, hammered away by Varane. Quickly returned by Yamalyuk towards the edge of the penalty area. And it's controlled by Tony, who seems to have shaken off that earlier injury. And now Jensen spreads it wide to Janel. Quickly down the line for Lewis Potter. Down the left-hand side, the cross in, flicked on by Jorgensen. Had a real chance there. Another free header, eight yards out, but it floats over the top. Well, I think they should have done better there as well. Able to get a two-on-one down the outside. Comes back in onto his right foot. It's a cross that come in. It's a difficult cross, to be fair. It's, Jorgensen's almost just got to try and flick it on because he's, he's almost coming back and generate the pace. And because he's in line with the front post, it's very difficult to do that. He's just got to try and get a flick on more than anything else. But Brentford weathered the early storm from United and now they come forward again now. Visser 
Looks to pick out the run of Yarmul Yuk down the right hand side. The low cross in though was too close to Anana, who swoops on it inside the six yard area. Yeah, no one was able to keep up with Yarmul Yuk there, really, were they? And you see as the ball played out to him, it's a good run. He's just come inside Wan Basaka. A simple save in the end for Anana. But Yarmul Yuk has done well so far. Big night for the 20 year old to come in against Manchester United. Now Rashford coming in field from the left. Tries to work the one-two with McTominay. Bruno Fernandes takes over. Dallo now. All very narrow for United, but the cross in almost finds Garnacho. He won the header above Jorgensen inside the six-yard area, but it's a couple of yards wide. Yeah, again, I think it's Brentford who are defending really well. In the end, it's just a, a ball to the back post. I can't see Garnacho jumping above this Brentford defence and heading it in the top corner. Currently Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. For the latest odds, head to Betfair, the official betting partner of Talk Sports Premier League coverage. Right now, Brentford 21 to 10 to win, 11 to 5 the draw, United 13 to 10 to win. Don't forget, Betfair are paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout. Applies to match odds, 90 markets or markets with the 90 icon. All thanks to Betfair, 18 plus, begambleaware.org. 23 minutes played. Still goalless, but not chanceless so far. As Visser slips it forward towards Tony. He could be in for Brentford, and it's hit the post. Hits the inside of the post. Now Rolislev inside the penalty area. Challenged by Juan Basaka. And what an opportunity there for Ivan Tony. Seemed to have done everything right, but United rescued by the woodwork. Really good play there from Brentford. Again, one touch play. Lovely touch. I wonder whether Tony was on offside or not. No, he was definitely onside. It was Wambasaka, the left back, keeping him onside. Went through the legs of Varane. And with someone like him, he'd be disappointed that's not got in the back of the net. It's a really good first touch and good strike. It's hit the post. And that definitely would have counted if it had gone in. Well, Thomas Frank applauds the effort on goal and also tries to wind up the crowd beneath us here to get more volume for them. As Jensen will take the corner kick again it's deep into the six yard area and it was a Brentford head which rose it was Johan Visser this time and he's frustrated because he heads it well wide and how many three headers are Brentford going to have inside the United six yard area I'll tell you what Nige that is an absolute peach of a corner it's one of those that Ananas normally as a defender you're thinking if it's anything in the six yard box I want my keeper coming out but it was kind of fizzed in and that will be another chance for Brentford in the air you get the feeling set pieces, they really can beat United, but at this moment in time, after the initial first 10, 15 minutes, they've beaten him in open play as well. Well, Steve McLaren and Eric Ten Hag extremely animated around the technical area ahead of us here. Dan Hag having words with Marcus Rashford. I thought maybe he was going to switch he and Garnacho for a moment, but he doesn't look too happy, Ten Hag, because United had early control of this game, but that's suddenly been relinquished. Yeah, there. and they're not passing it out there, you can see, because they're worried of the Brentford press. So Anana's kicked it long. It's gone straight to a Brentford midfielder, who, unfortunately for the home side, has given it straight back. So United have possession, but just those little things where you, you don't want to risk it. They realise they're under pressure at this moment in time. So don't put more pressure on yourself by playing out from the back. Big game coming up in women's football tomorrow on Talk Sport 2. Arsenal against Chelsea, the Continental League Cup final. Faye will be in the chair with Joe Shannon and Courtney Sweetman Kirk on commentary. And then we resume the race for the Premier League on Easter Monday on the home of the EFL. Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. It was an extraordinary day of twists and turns yesterday on Monday 12.30 on TalkSport Leicester against Norwich what a game that is after what happened yesterday game day live with Adrian Durham from one on TalkSport we'll have all the goals as they go in Stoke against Huddersfield a big game at the bottom is also on TalkSport 2 at 3 and then we switch to TalkSport for Ipswich against Southampton an absolute monster game at 5.30 and a Yorkshire derby to finish Leeds against Hull Leeds looking to go back on top possibly after dropping points at Watford last night that game's also on Talk Sport at 8 o'clock on Monday evening and the championship at the moment is tremendous at both ends of the table big day for Ipswich yesterday wasn't it big day for Leicester as well I was at Ashton Gate and they were absolutely appalling 
And they've got some work to do. Tony now strides away from Mainu, slips it into the penalty area for Yamoliuk, and he almost got there, the Ukrainian. And it's hacked away in the end by Varane, but United here are all over the place defensively. Brilliant tackle from Darlow, I have to say. Really good play from Tony. Vissa first bringing it down. Tony going past. Kobe Mainu just diving in there. I'll tell you what, that is a wonderful recovery tackle from Darlow. And the ball comes out and bounces awkwardly in front of Rashford, but you expect him to bring it down. Bounces off him and it's a throw for Brentford. Jensen will take it. And they may believe this could be their moment. Janelt, square towards Yamali Yuk again. And now wide to Jensen down the right. And did Bruno Fernandes get a touch on that as he stretched? He didn't. And the assistant on this near side, Adrian Holmes, has given the goal kick to Manchester United 27 minutes played nil nil we've had relatively few efforts on goal but Ivan Tony hitting the inside of the post for Brentford and at the moment Bruno Fernandes is now deep in conversation with Eric Ten Hag looking for another tweak I'll tell you what if someone came in from abroad and didn't know which team was which and which was chasing for a possible Champions League place and which one was a trying to avoid relegation you would have no idea if anything you switch it around now Garnacho coming forward for United and Wambasaka will now receive from Bruno Fernandes coming forward down the left hand side cuts in field onto his favoured right foot now Bruno Fernandes again McTominay turns to find Dallow on the overlap Dallow with the cross high into the penalty area Runoslav does well to rise above Wan-Bissaka I think he was pushed anyway but it was claimed by Flecken before the ball went behind for a goal kick and he quickly bowls it forward towards Jensen on this near side Tony waits at the far post the high ball towards Tony he's got time to bring it down Lewis Potter on the overlap but Tony hits it right footed he was always going to shoot and it strikes the body of Lindelof and spins out on the far side for a throw in to Brentford brilliant play from Flecken he catches the ball makes sure it's not a corner and then he sees the run down the right hand side really good long throw and then Jensen it's a fantastic ping across to, to Tony I mean it would have been some goal two or three passes he came inside Lindelof engaged in the end it was a very good block and even now when United are on the attack Brentford looked dangerous on the counter below Brentford today Everton and Luton lost Forest, Burnley and Sheffield United all drew just to tighten things up a long throw in towards the near post flicked on by McTominay into his own six yard area but Anana was able to claim and he quickly bowls it out wide to the near side the left and Rashford half an hour played nil nil here at the GTEC on Chalk Sport Saturday night football from the Premier League as Bruno Fernandes brings it forward now and we will have every single Premier League game from the midweek round coming up on the Talk Sport app and there'll also be selected games on the Talk Sport network details of those to come in a moment as Bruno Fernandes has it midway inside the Brentford half wide towards Rashford again Kabi Mainu takes over good ball forward to Hoyland who tries to spin but his control was loose and in the end it spins away off him and it will be a throw into Brentford on this near side on Tuesday night on Talk Sport 2 at 7.30 Everton against Newcastle Talk Sport at 8.15 will have West Ham against Spurs then on Wednesday night Arsenal against Luton 7.30 kickoff. that game will be on Talk Sport Talk Sport 2 will have Manchester City against Aston Villa at 8.15 and then on Thursday night Liverpool against Sheffield United on Talk Sport at 7.30 8.15 it is Chelsea against Manchester United on Talk Sport 2 Lewis Potter brings it forward now high cross in looking for Tony headed away at the near post by Varane it's another Brentford corner well again it's that counter isn't it and even if United look like they're in control suddenly now Brentford feels so confident they can go those two or three passes what I was saying early on that United should have been doing in the first 10 minutes go look a little bit more forward and, and quicker it's exactly what Brentford are doing now and it's another dangerous set piece that could come in Jensen will take it and can Brentford turn this pressure into the opening goal here short to Janel down the right back towards Jensen again who is onside whips in the cross high to the far post a header grazes the top of the crossbar 
and it was another opportunity it was Matthias Jorgensen unmarked at the far post a free header didn't have to leave the ground and it thudded against the top of the crossbar well do you know what it's just really poor defending and basic schoolboy defending from United it's a 2v1 you know you can see if someone's coming short then come out someone else come out as well it's allowed the cross to come in it's a really good cross perhaps slightly over hit but there's Jorgensen at the far post free header couple of and inches and there were two down. of them there if there it wasn't him it would have been Janelt I mean uh, uh, they're not picking up the cross not stopping the cross and they're not picking up the guys at the far post you're listening to Brentford against Manchester United on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent a Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. 32 and a half minutes played, nil nil. I'll tell you what as well, Nigel, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, they're on top, they, they kind of need a goal. When you're on top like this, especially against a t- team like Manchester United, who are not going to play this poorly, certainly not in the second half, and you think they'd step it up even in the first. You need, when you are on top, you need to score that goal. If Brentford score that first goal, you get the feeling the way they're defending is not how they've been defending in recent months. They look really sharp, really together. That United will find them difficult to break down. So now they're on top, they need to find that first goal. Brentford have had seven shots so far, United two. Nobody's had a shot on target, although Tony's hit the post. But Brentford's corner count is ahead six to one. We've had a post and a crossbar, haven't we? Absolutely. Now Rashford, infield towards Varane, but as we said right at the start, United are a moments team and they can conjure something up. Mainu, wide towards Wambasaka, infield towards Rashford, it was on the right foot for a second. Mainu though is challenged by Visser on the edge of the penalty area. The early ball forward now, and Tony has it. One on one with Lindelof, just outside the penalty area. Tony may need support, comes infield, left foot shot over the top. Visser was waiting for the pullback, but Ivan Tony slaps at the ground in frustration because he knows that was another really good chance. He's slapping the ground because he knew, again, it's another counter-attack. And I have to say, it's a great ball in. They're so well drilled in terms of, if that happens, just look for the ball over the top. And he knew he had Lindelof scrambling. He came inside on his left foot. If that was his right, you get the feeling he probably would have hit the target. So he did everything right coming inside. But just in the end was leaning back and not able to hit the target in Testanana. But now Rashford from a long ball forward. He is offside and exasperation for Eric Ten Hag as Marcus Rashford balloons his shot high into the crowd. And do you know what, Nigel? Again, you just said about they're, they're a team of moments, United. They are. That's exactly what they are. And, you know, you talk about Ten Hag and is he going to stay? And you feel like he's on trial from now to the end of the season. And I personally would like to see him stay because I think, you know, not all these players, but a lot of these players have just seen off managers left, right and centre. The culture hasn't been good. I think he's trying to instill the right culture, but he definitely needs results. It's all about what happens on the pitch. But the fact that they are a team of moments doesn't do him any favours because it doesn't look like there's a, there's a pattern of play to them. It's just waiting for something to happen from someone special. Yamoliuk with a high ball forward into the penalty and nodded down again. Jorgensen was in there, so too was Ayer. Fired towards goal and just wide by Janelt on the edge of the penalty area. Really caught hold of that left foot and Anana was rooted and it was a couple of yards wide. He was beating Anana, wasn't he? He wasn't moving at all. Again, they, they, they're just getting the mix really well, really right. Sometimes they're going long, sometimes they're going short. This time it was a long ball into the box, a, a headed down and Janelt's struck it first time it was a really good strike wide in the end but Anana hardly moved well a big period coming up for United of course away to Chelsea live on TalkSport 2 on Thursday Brentford play on Wednesday at home to Brighton you can hear that game on the TalkSport app and then they're at home to Liverpool which is always a big game and will certainly be a big game in the context of this season as a whole but you look at April for Brentford three games in succession at home to Sheffield United away to Luton and Everton that's where they can clinch survival or the flip side of that is they can be in real trouble well absolutely uh, I think we've learned with the Premier League it's very difficult to predict but what you would say is you know you look at certain fixtures and you're thinking if you want to get where you want to get to you quite simply have to win those games 26 points at the minute you would think Minimum 10, possibly 12 to survive. Wan-Bissaka 
clears the ball again on the edge of the penalty area nodded further away by Hoyland who has barely had a kick inside the Brentford half so far now it's won back by Yameliuk tries to find Tony on this near side but he holds on to the ball the Ukrainian he's done well finding Janelt now slipped into the penalty area great run by Rolleslev square towards Visser who hooks it over the top I don't think Visser was set really to fire the shot in but you wonder why Rolleslev didn't go for goal himself again they're, they're just opening Manchester United up at the moment and I think he felt I mean dare I say it's a it's a fullback not having a shot himself to be fair Visser probably was in a better position it's, it's not the best of balls to Visser at all he's kind of dinked it up so he's on his right foot now got to try and keep it down and get it on target and get good contact you're a fullback you would have shot from there well well you wouldn't have been there you'd have been uh, on the halfway line because uh, that's how you played then. I would have had a nosebleed yes. by then. 37 no, minutes played nil nil there, there is that kind of you're not in a best, but great position you can see or you think someone's in a better position so I, I think it wasn't the bad selection to pass it's just it wasn't a good execution of it whereas if Ivan Tony's in that position then obviously he is shooting now gone out show for United on the far side but he's lost out to Collins who has had a decent game so far for Brentford and their back three has worked well as it's high towards Tony again on this near side but one Basaka is able to head away now Tony has time to spin and play it wide to Rulislev on this near side Rulislev just shimmies maybe disguises the ball to Tony but it's back towards Jorgensen who of course has Janka on the back of his shirt as he has done for so many years now and here is Ayer at the heart of their back three finding Jorgensen again down the line for Rolleslev who comes in field wan makes the challenge and Simon Hooper has given the free kick wan was rather rash there sliding in and as a result Hooper shows him the game's first yellow card well I think that pretty much sums it up you've got Rashford and wan who is one of the best man-to-man -man markers in English football and he's going to ground he doesn't need to it's Kobe Maynard in fact with wan but wan doesn't need to go to ground there's two of you against one. Just stay on your feet and you probably will win the ball. And I was just thinking a minute ago, actually, for Ruslev, this is perfect for him. He's bombing on as much as possible. Marcus Rashford's having to go with him. He's taking Rashford the other way. He would have been thinking he'd be really under pressure today, but he's loving it at the moment down the right wing. Flecken will take the free kick, which is inside the United half, the Brentford goalkeeper. Launch high towards the far post again. Nodded down inside the area. Sliding in was Tony. And the shot was blocked inside the six-yard area. United looking for a free kick. They have a player down inside the area. But a corner kick's been given. And once again, it was Rafa Varane with the challenge. And at times, he must feel as though he's playing Brentford on his own. Well, again, he, he read the situation really well, didn't he? But it was just a, a ball into the box. And then see what happens. They win it. And he comes around, has that tackle with Tony. It's an important one because Tony would have been in having the shot first time. But how many one on ones has Varane had in this game so far? We've only played 40 minutes, but four or five? Well, absolutely. And you think about the first 10 or so minutes, United were very much on top. So it's massive credit to, to Brentford how they've been since. But they've got to get that goal. That is the issue for them. Jan Elt will take the corner kick on the far side four minutes to play in the first half deeper corner this time from Janel towards the edge of the six yard area Tony rising but can't make contact and Dallow in unfamiliar territory on the left will come in field and play it square again towards Varane and United do have the opportunity to try and build from deep here Bruno Fernandes wide towards Rashford on the left wan makes that move on the outside but it's in field to Garnacho and now Rashford again McTominay made a burst towards the edge of the penalty area but wasn't seen Lindelof and now Dallow finding Rashford 25 yards out infield onto the right foot he hits it well and it spun through the crowd but it was a comfortable save for Flecken yeah it was the deflection in the end again not allowing Rashford to have that kind of we know what he's like from 25 yards out it was good defending in the end from Yarmouk. I think that's what United are resorted to at the moment. Just long-range shots. 
Well, only the top three in the Premier League have had more away wins than United this season. But they're under pressure here. Rune slip found by Visser down the right-hand side. Early cross into the penalty area. Lindelof slides in before his goalkeeper. No communication there in the end. It's gone behind for a corner. But that could have been so much worse for United. Honestly, Nigel, this is such great play from Brentford, you have to say. Look, you can criticise United. They should get a lot tighter. Ruiz left down the right-hand side. He is absolutely loving it. He's not having to do too much defensively against Rashford, and he's just playing a 1-2 around Juan Bissaka, who's a wonderful defender. He plays the ball in first. You're just wanting one of the strikers to come in across the near post. And again, just the lack of communication between Anana and Lindelof means it's a corner. Jensen will take it with two and a half minutes to play in the first half here. Nil-nil. Jensen. The corner is headed away, then fired through the crowd at the far post by Amoliuk. Regathered once again by Aya. And now back towards Jorgensen on the edge of the penalty area. Aya again with the cross into the penalty area. Keen Lewis Potter with the header at the near post and it's saved. Going down low by Anana. Well, it's a simple save in the end for, for someone of the calibre of Anana. But again, it just goes to show how on top Brentford are. I cannot believe that United would be this poor in the second half and it will be interesting to see how or if Ten Hag actually does anything in terms of changing personnel well 43 minutes played they've had 12 wins by one goal so far this season and eight of those winners have come in the final 15 minutes of game so stay tuned no absolutely they've done really well and we know that Brentford do drop points this game is far from over in terms of could be anything could happen here absolutely anything now McTominay finding Manu again midway inside the Brentford half Juan Basaka slides it in towards Hoyland but it's a poor ball gave Hoyland no chance at all Jorgensen steps in and clips it forward over the top for Jensen now Bako cross towards the left hand side and Visser who controls it brilliantly ahead of Rashford he then goes down under the challenge of Bruno Fernandes but Simon Hooper well placed says no free kick Visser Leads for one from the turf, but United come forward now with Bruno Fernandes. Hoyland again, back towards Bruno Fernandes, into the final 45 seconds of normal time in the first half here. Bruno Fernandes again, square, and then Bruno Fernandes goes down late. He's been caught by Visser, and I think that's a retaliatory challenge there from Johan Visser, and he'll get a yellow card for it. Well, he's not happy with the ref, is he? I didn't actually see that. He passed it off and my well, eyes followed the ball. And the ball came back inside now. Fernandez. Ah, it's one of those. It's a foul. It's not a yellow card. Well, he went down midway inside the United half under the challenge of Dallo. And looking at the replay on the monitor here in our commentary position, it, it was soft. Well, it was. And it was one of those where Bruno Fernandez has played the ball and his follow through was meant that his. He's caught Visser. OK, Visser's come in very quick and wasn't going to win the ball. Just give a foul. It's not a yellow card. Into a single added minute. Bruno Fernandes clips it into the penalty area for Rashford who tried to volley at the near post, but the effort was blocked. King Lewis Potter will control in the left-back area. Now hammers it high up towards the halfway line, but both Dallo and Bruno Fernandes are there to control. And... The pantomime villain, as so often, is Bruno Fernandes. Although, in this case, I don't really think he's done too much wrong. No, and I also thought the pantomime season had gone. Here is Linda Love now. It's British summertime. Feels it. Early tomorrow morning. Boos again for Bruno Fernandes. There's, it's played forward towards Kobe Minor. There goes the half-time whistle. And the home crowd rise to acclaim their team here at the GTEC Community Stadium. Brentford have dominated long spells. They've had the chances, notably when Ivan Tony hit the post and a header from Matthias Jorgensen just skimmed the top of the crossbar. But crucially, they haven't scored. Manchester United have not been good for much of the opening 45 minutes. But surely they will get better and have the bees miss their opportunity half time Brentford nil Manchester United nil what an interesting 45 minutes of football Scott Minto I can't quite work out 
what on earth Manchester United were doing defensively in that game. No, and do you know what? They, they actually started well and they started very much on the front foot and Kobe Mania was having lovely little one-two touch passes, was controlling and dictating the game and then Brentford sort of, it's almost they said, no, we, we can't do it this way. We're going to be even more in your face. And they were and it, and it got to the point where actually not only were they very good in terms of trying to get the ball long and winning the knockdowns but actually they, they outpassed Manchester United as well a couple of really good counter attacks Rose left down the right hand side is is having an absolute ball there's no way he'd have thought he'd be enjoying this game as much as possible with wan Saka having to go past him that's not an easy thing to do and then defend against Rashford he's been superb the midfielder bossing it Ivan Tony and Visser up front are, are, are bossing the, the Manchester United defence as well fair play to Varane he's making last ditch tackles and even on set pieces they're creating chances they've hit the post they've hit the bar they've been very much on top but they have to get that goal that's what's crucial you can have all the possession you want you can have all the chances as you want if you don't hit the ball in the back of the net you either walk away with a point or you walk away with none well that is the aim of the game isn't it to stick that round thing into the the, the net there simple and, really isn't yeah it? absolutely <laughs> make it sound simple you know but but in terms of even you look at the stats it's 14 attempts to three you know both have only had one on target but it seems harsh that a, a post and a crossbar doesn't count as on target but it doesn't in the stats but the point is 14 to three i think says absolutely everything I can't believe I can't believe that United would be that bad in the second half. I think they will have to step it up, whether that's substitutions or just the kind of good old listen, you've got to get out there, I'll give you 10-15 minutes, otherwise you're coming off. I just wonder, I just wonder whether Brentford have missed the boat there. If they carry on in the second half and playing like that, they'll win the game. But I do think United will come back at them. Yeah, I agree with you. I was watching Eric Ten Hag with interest throughout the 45 minutes and he had his hands jammed in his pockets and was I mean, I could only imagine what was going through his head. He'd started to be animated at the beginning and then he'd almost given up, giving them any kind of instruction whatsoever because they were just like headless chickens at times. Well, the thing is, what, what they were doing in the first 10 minutes, they were, they were passing the ball, they were keeping it. They weren't really creating too many clear-cut chances, but they were bossing the game in midfield. Now, Brentford are bossing the game in midfield they're defending really well where United are, are left to sort of shots from 25 yards out and Rasmus, Rasmus Hoyland is kind of not really holding the ball up and he's certainly not been given quality service and they're also creating lots of chances down the other end so it's not just both boxes it's in midfield as well yeah. Brentford are now dominating this game they wouldn't have wanted half time to come Ten Hag definitely would have wanted the half time to come and I'm, I'm kind of looking at the bench as well You've got Amrabat, you know, Maguire, Martinez. You've obviously got Mount and Ericsson. Who's a game changer on there, though? Who, well, who, who's going to inject some energy do, into them? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's the important thing. I, I would say, out if there was one player I'd want at this moment in time off the bench, for me, the side, it'd be Brian and Bermo. You know, he'd be the one that I'd want that kind of pace. Mm. And United don't really have that. You know, Mason Mount, quality player, not really happened for him for one reason or another at United yet. And Eric's, Anthony can do it when he wants to. Well, he did it. He scored against yeah. uh, Liverpool, didn't he, in, in the FA Cup. And he's certainly someone who can come on. But I think I'm right in saying he hasn't either scored or made an assist in the Premier League this season. So he can do it. Been waiting for two years to, for, yeah. him to, for him to do it. So... At this moment in time, I wouldn't say there are anybody who's in great form that you could say that would come off the bench. They do have quality, as I say, in Mount, Ericsson and, and Anthony. I'd still fancy Brian and Bermo to come on and, and you know, he's raring to go after a long-term injury. Well, let's see what Thomas Frank decides to do. And, of course, Eric Ten Hag as well. Both these sides desperately need the points for very different reasons. Brentford trying to avoid getting sucked even further into this relegation battle. And Manchester United, after Aston Villa and Spurs, both won three points earlier on today in the Premier League, need to keep the pace with their Champions League rivals, otherwise they are out of it uh, with nine games left to play. This is Game Night exclusive on Talk Sport. At the break, it's Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. Second half action coming next, and we'll round up some of the other day's Premier League action. Game Day exclusive on TalkSport with Now. Stream the Premier League contract-free with a Now Sports Day or Month membership. 18 plus, stream via internet, terms apply. Hope there won't be any VAR delays today. Heard that rumour about their striker. 
Can't wait to see what the pundits make of that booking. Looking forward to the match report on this one. When it comes to football, never miss a story. Get the best news, opinion, interviews and gossip at thesun.co.uk. For the football lowdown every day, it's thesun.co.uk. Mmm. Mm when it's lunch o'clock, I just eat the tortilla naked burrito bowl. Oh, I didn't know you could get those. <laughs> There's a lot you don't know, dear. Well, I know that shirt's not coming back into fashion anytime soon. Too shame. Get tortilla, Subway, Pret and more delivered. For lunch and everything else... Did somebody say just eat? Charges apply. Check available restaurants in your area and open in times on justeat.co.uk for details. Don't break your stride. Hurry to Screwfix for unmissable deals on trade essentials. Big paint job on? Buy the Fortress Big Box Set for $27.99 and get a half-price extension pole for just $7.47. Patios and driveways in need of a clean? Get the Titan Pressure Washer for just $59.99. Shop now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Price is valid until at least April 1st. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game cozied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. In sport, what's just as important as the goals, the glory, the roar of the crowd... Yes, it's the half-time break. Time for a breather, a reset, to keep everything on track. In sports betting, Betfair's safer gambling tools help you do that too. Like timeouts, so you take that all-important half-time break. Or deposit limits, to help you keep count. Manage your play at safergambling.betfair.com. Simple ways to stay on top of your game with Betfair. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. Uno is now available in McDonald's Happy Meal. So let's see who can shout Uno first. Bring it on. Mm, yes, yes. Ooh. No, a wild card. <laughs> right. Ah, yes, back in the game. Yes. Ooh. No, I draw one card. Ah. Uno. <laughs> Better look next time. Have fun with your Uno cards. Does that one count? Nope. Oh, some fun, some food. It's all inside this Happy Meal. <laughs> Until 7th of May from 11am. Includes one pre-selected book or toy. Uno range comprises toys only. While stocks last. Game day exclusive on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. Game day. It's football to the max. Into the corner. Wonderful goal. Game day exclusive. On TalkSport. Game day. And we finish with a game here at the GTEC Community Stadium, which means so much to both ends of the table. Brentford in real danger of relegation. Manchester United hoping for a place in the Champions League once again. Back to the edge of the penalty area. Fernandez with a right foot shot, drags it wide, and that was a chance. Brentford, a team who have lost 12 of their last 15 games. As Visser slips it forward towards Tony. He could be in for Brentford, and it's hit the post. Hits the inside of the post. As Jensen will take the corner kick. Again, it's deep into the six-yard area. And it was a Brentford head which rose. It was Johan Visser this time. He realised they're under pressure at this moment in time, so don't put more pressure on yourself by playing out from the back. And can Brentford turn this pressure into the opening goal here? And the cross high to the far post, a header grazes the top of the crossbar and it was another opportunity. It was Matthias Jorgensen. Tony may need support. Comes in field, left foot shot over the top. This is game night on Talk Sport, the only place on national radio you can hear commentary of Brentford Manchester United in the Premier League. I'm Faker Rothers. Second half kicking off in around five, six minutes time with the score currently goalless. But that's not even half of it, as you heard there. Brentford have hit the woodwork twice. Manchester United defensively all over the place. Not quite sure how we've not had any goals in the first 45 minutes. Let's find out what the second 45 is going to bring. Before we round up some of the day's action, though, let's get the latest from Betfair, the official betting partner of Talk Sports Premier League coverage. 
game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a completely free Acura or Bet Builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds of 1.5 or minimum one leg. T's and C's apply 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. OK, Sam Rosbottom, we wanted goals in this game. So far, we have none, which was not the plan. How are the odds looking? Oh, I mean, we've had everything but, haven't we, goals? Uh, hopefully, we can get some in the second 45. Look, if there is going to be a winner in this game, there's very, very little in the odds between Manchester United and Brentford. Even though Brentford have hit the woodwork twice, it is Manchester United who edge it. They are 9-5. to five. So, remember, they were odds on before half time uh, they're now nine to five brentford two to one to get all three points the draw in this one now 13 to eight we, you were speaking weren't you with scott earlier about players that can impact this second half alejandro garnaccio has been very very key for manchester united over these past weeks and months over on the sports but we have odds boosted him to score or assist that was five to two now three to one but like you said we need goals for our charity bet Faye. A reminder for our bet builder, we've got Manchester United to win over two and a half goals and both teams to score. Our £50 charity stake will return £144 if we have an eventful second half. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Thank you very much, Sam. That odds update, all thanks to Betfair. 18 plus. BigAmbleAware.org. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a completely free Acura or Bet Builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds of 1.5 or minimum one leg. T's and C's apply 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Harry Maguire left the England camp injured after the Brazil game, but is uh, stretching and warming up quite vociferously over on my left-hand side currently. Could he be one of the changes Eric Ten Hag has decided to make after his uh, shambolic-looking defence in that first half? We shall wait and see. Listen, we've got so much football coming up for you across the TalkSport network over the Easter weekend. You can join Adrian Durham, Mickey Gray and Perry Groves on the Sunday session tomorrow with all the goals as they go in from the Premier League, the Women's Super League and the Women's League Cup final, which will be live over on TalkSport 2. And you can also hear updates from Liverpool against Brighton and Manchester City against Arsenal in the Premier League. On Monday, a championship special for you. Leicester Norwich kicks things off on TalkSport 2 at 12.30. Then you can go around the grounds on game day live from one o'clock on TalkSport with Adrian again. Then we've got a two, Talk Sport 2 exclusive at 3, Stoke against Huddersfield. And then Ipswich at Southampton at 5.30. And Leeds United against Hull at 8 p.m. on Talk Sport. Huge championship day for you. Commentary as well of all of the Premier League games from the midweek fixtures. You can hear Brentford Brighton exclusively on the Talk Sport app on Wednesday night from 7.30. And Manchester United's trip to Chelsea on Thursday night is live on Talk Sport 2. That is an 8.15 kickoff. The Manchester United players are just making their way out of the tunnel. I'm wondering whether or not I've got time to give you some of uh, the other results from today in the Premier League. Aston Villa restored their three-point lead over Tottenham Hotspur and returned to fourth spot after a 2-0 win over Wolves in the 5.30 kickoff. Spurs have temporarily gone fourth after a 2-1 come-from-behind win over Luton Town. But did the win for Villa come at a cost? Let's hear from Villa boss Unai Emery, who spoke to Talk Sport after the game and gave an update on Ollie Watkins' injury. He felt something, maybe hamstring, hopefully not a lot, but uh, he, he was feeling, feeling not enough to, to play the second half. Did he seem OK with himself? Was he confident or was he worried? Uh, he was a little bit worried and uh, tomorrow we'll check in. Hopefully not a lot because he was at the beginning feeling uh, cool, cool, carry on playing but uh, at the last moment with the first te test with the, with the doctor uh, we refused and we decided uh, uh, don't play the second half well that would be a big blow for Gareth Southgate and of course for Aston Villa in their bid for Champions League football if Ollie Watkins was not to recover ahead of the midweek fixtures and the weekend of course Manchester United back out 
a good couple of minutes earlier than Brentford as Brentford players make their way out onto the pitch. It does look as if Harry Maguire is coming on. Details of all of that with your match commentator, Nigel Adderley, as we head into the second half of Brentford against Manchester United. Yeah, Ni Sorry, Nigel, go for it. Yeah, Harry Maguire is coming on and it's Rafa Varane who is going off. Varane, of course, has had his injury problems this season, but did play 90 minutes in nine of the previous 10 games in the Premier League and as we said at stages in the first half Scott Minto at times it was the run against the rest yeah that's right I, I think it's not necessarily a tie this thing but there's a couple of tackles he put in and it's probably feeling very very sore now it's not something I think Ten Hag would have wanted to do I, I like Harry Maguire I do I think Varane was the best defender for United in that first half and Maguire is quick to hammer the ball away United defending the goal away to our left in their black and white stripes in the second half. Brentford in their red and white stripes. And they have a free kick on the halfway line. And their team again is Flecken in goal. Jorgensen, Collins and I are the back three. Roloslev, Janelt, Jensen, Jamoliuk and Lewis Potter in midfield with Visser and Tony in attack as Brentford come forward on this near side but the back heel from Lewis Potter won't find Jensen but Jensen's done well to play the ball off Dallo and Brentford have a corner right at the start of the second half well they've started really well hasn't they and I think Thomas Frank would have been saying with some of his last words going out was just forget the half time do what you were doing in the first half and start the second half in that way and that's what they've tried to do Corners played short towards Rolleslev. Low ball into the penalty area, sliced by a United boot toward the, towards the far post, and it's hacked away by Rashford in the end, and it will be a throw-in to Brentford. United midfield need to find a way to gain back control of the game that they had in the first 10 minutes. You win games in both boxes, but you control the game in midfield, and by the end of it, they weren't doing any of it. No, it's almost just hanging on in there. So the midfield of United need to start getting hold of the ball and just putting Brentford on the back foot. Nearly two minutes played in the second half. I'll give you the United team again in a moment. But first of all, Brentford have a long throw. Hurled high by Jensen towards the near post, headed behind by Maguire. And it will be corner number 10 for Brentford in this game. They've also had 14 shots in the match so far, but only one on target. United have had three and they've also had a single one on target but Brentford need to make these chances pay this is the sort of thing you see from a team who often struggle they play well but they don't take advantage of opportunities Jensen with the corner into the near post headed away it's one back Janot goes down inside the penalty area players from both Brentford and United are down it was a challenge on the edge of the penalty area from Garnacho, Simon Long, the referee, gave nothing initially. Stuart Atwell is the VAR official, and I wonder if he'll become involved here. Absolutely will he become involved. And we've seen some dodgy penalties given today. I don't think that is a penalty myself, but then I've looked at a few that's gone on today, and I didn't think it was. It might not even be inside the box. Difficult to see if it's on the line. If it's on the line, then it's in. No, for me, no. That's, that's not a penalty. It's not even a foul. The United team again, Anana in goal, Dallo, Lindelof, Maguire and Juan Basaka now. Maguire coming on at half-time, McTominay and Minor in midfield, Garnacho, Fernandez and Rashford behind Hoyland. And it was a coming together between Janelt and Garnacho, but if you look at the reaction from Janelt on the replay, he did rather go down at instalments. Now the ball is allowed to drop on the edge of the... United penalty area, then they give the ball away. Here is Tony found by Jensen inside the penalty area. I think he tries to nutmeg the player, Maguire, who was in front of him, but in the end it's scramble clear, but Brentford try and win it back, and then it's hammered away by Dallo. And once again, United really at sixes and sevens defensively. Very much on the back foot. I'm not quite sure what Harry Maguire was trying to do there. He kind of went to the side on his knees, and Tony was still trying to get it through his legs but it's very much Brentford on, on top and very much how their first half ended 17,138 the crowd here 1,725 of those are here to support Manchester United 
as they try and come forward just in front of us with McTominay but Brentford briefly win it back but now Mainu finding Lindelof once again he can cross the halfway line with four and a half minutes played in the second half here on Talk Sport Brentford nil Manchester United nil Rashford now picks his way through the challenges on the edge of the penalty area down the left plays it back to Bruno Fernandes who fires him the shot but it's a comfortable save on his haunches for Flecken on the edge of the six yard area yeah but it's better from United at least one they're getting into the final third of Brentford and two they're getting a, a shot on target not the ease of shots as well it's kind of just dipping down and Flecken does well as Rasmus Hoyland was ready to pounce a reminder, earlier on today, on game day on Talk Sport at 12.30, Newcastle, three goals in the final seven minutes, coming back to beat West Ham 4-3. At three o'clock, we brought you another late winning goal from Son Hyung min for Spurs, who came from behind to beat Luton by two goals to one. Elsewhere today, Seamus Coleman with a very late own goal for Bournemouth to beat Everton 2-1. Burnley, with ten men, twice came from behind to draw at Chelsea it was also a draw between Forest and Palace and Fulham Rodrigo Muniz with a very late equaliser at Sheffield United 3-3 Rashford fighting Bruno Fernandes now Rashford on the edge of the penalty area in towards Hoyland with his back to goal challenged by Jan Elt and Jan Elt will strike clear but his ball forward is blocked by Bruno Fernandes but now it's cleared by Brentford but United have it back again Bruno Fernandes to the left and Rashford, who is onside, clips the cross into the penalty area, diving to head the ball away at the near post was Ayer. But now Bruno Fernandes, square again towards Dalla, right foot shot from him, swings over the head of Flecken and just for wide. I tell you what, I was thinking, uh, I'm not going to shoot from there, and he does. That is just inches wide, Flecken making it look, and he probably did have it covered. It's better from United. Just in the last couple of minutes, again, two chances, one shot on target, one shot just off target. Just trying to put Brentford on the back foot a little bit. And in the late game today, Villa beating Wolves, as we heard, by two goals to nil. So they're now 12 points clear of United. United do have two games in hand, including this one. Villa currently fourth. Spurs three points behind them in fifth, which, of course, still could mean a place in the revamped Champions League but United starting this game nine points behind Spurs and of course they've got Chelsea at home or Chelsea away rather live on Talk Sport 2 on Thursday and then Liverpool at home next weekend and really United in the market now where they've got to win every game and hope and even then it might not be enough Brentford have given the ball away cheaply though Bruno Fernandes tries to find Garnaccio on this near side but Lewis Potter manages to intervene and he now gets it back from Nathan Collins on this near side Jensen midway inside the Brentford half finding Lewis Potter again who steps away smartly from Bruno Fernandes wide towards Yamoliuk a high ball forward from him though is cut out by Juan Basaka and it's back with Harry Maguire with the turquoise boots just in front of us and he's played a good ball forward to find Dallow down this near side the United right Garnaccio is further ahead of him only Bruno Fernandes and Hoyland inside the penalty area the cross from Garnaccio is blocked by Collins and he will clear and here is Vissanel breaking over the halfway line for Brentford Tony is ahead of him Tony creates the space for Visser on the edge of the penalty area right foot shot from him is just wide and he had Tony unmarked in the centre well, again, another quick counter-attack, and it was just a clearance, really, that went in between the two central midfielders of Manchester United. Actually felt Kobe Maynard should have read the situation. He wasn't sprinting back. And now Bruno Fernandes, no flag against him, breaking into the penalty area. Square towards Hoyland, brilliant save by Flecken. Hoyland clean through, hammered that, left-footed, and Flecken made an outstanding stop to tip the ball behind for a corner. That is an absolute sensational save from Flecken, it really is. And it's come from nowhere. It's a simple ball over the top. He's miles offside. He, he's a, he looks at least a yard offside, but it's not been given. And in the end, the corner comes to nothing. The free kick's being given by Simon Hooper. You would think if the ball had gone in, then VAR perhaps would have said, OK, we'll have a look at that and, and ruled it out, but we don't know. Well, Brentford were furious there, but Hoyland... That's a great save. Kept out by Flecken. That's a brilliant save. I mean, Hoyland, to be fair, has 
hardly seen him and it's not necessarily his fault he's kind of stumbled into the shot but he still managed to get decent pace on it it's a really good reaction save and strong hand from Flecken only four clean sheets in 28 games for Mark Flecken in English football so far in the Premier League now Visser at the other end bounces off a challenge he's got support Visser going into the penalty area goes down under the challenge of Juan Basaka again there appeals for a penalty but Tony keeps the ball in play on the right hand side whips it in low there's a miss kick by Maguire Yamoliak with a shot brilliant save by Anana the rebound is then blocked by the goalkeeper again it was Lewis Potter with the effort and somehow United escape thanks to a wonderful double save from their goalkeeper where do we start with that? First of all, not a penalty. Second of all, two really good saves from Anana. Yamaliuk had the shot. He's dived to his right. Lewis Potter's come in. He's pounced and he's just made himself big, the goalkeeper. Really good. They practiced that so many times. Well, have play to, has been to... halted here. Sorry, Scott. And after a check, seemingly, play will continue. It's not a pen. It's no not chance. a pen. There is contact. But just because there's contact doesn't mean to say that it's a foul and it's going to be a penalty. But I just say on Anana that, you know, goalkeepers do that all the time, practising. You, you dive, you make the save, you get up and you're ready for that rebound. That's exactly what he did there. Brilliant goalkeeping. Ten minutes played in the second half. Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. But chances at both ends and what's been a thrilling start to the second half. Jensen with a long throw in towards the near post. It's loose inside the six-yard area. Cleared away as far as Janel tries to get the ball out of his feet. Tries to bulldoze his way through inside the penalty area. Then a shot is blocked and then Ayer at the far post tries to hammer the ball in. That's blocked inside the penalty area and it's scrambled away for a throw in. And once again, Brentford are appealing for a penalty. Well, I mean this in the best possible way. But here is an opportunity again as it's fired across the penalty area and this time it goes wide and it was Ayer who was closest to it. I mean this in the best possible way. It's almost like under 10s football where there's just one ball, there's about 10 people just trying to kick it as quickly as possible. And in the end it's come out wide. There's a great ball that's whipped in. No one's able to get on the end of it and Anana lets it go wide. But do you know what? This is a fantastic 0-0 game. We haven't got the goals that Faye wants clearly but we've got everything else. Well, Brentford have not been involved in a 0-0 draw for 47 games in the Premier League. And that was at Leeds back in January of last year as Hoyland is penalised for some shirt pulling just inside the Brentford half. Eric Ten Hag is talking to Adrian Holmes, the assistant on this near side, complaining about that. And we are about to see a change and Anthony will be coming on for United. Maguire replacing Varane at half-time and Anthony will be on shortly. No goals or assists for Anthony in the Premier League so far this season in 22 games. He'll be thinking about that goal he scored it in the FA Cup though, won't he? And certainly Ten Hag will be saying that to him as well. Now Brentford looking to come forward again on the far side. It's back towards Nathan Collins down the right. And now Ruder Slep scoops a high cross into the area Jorgensen's underneath it and the shot from Visser flashes just wide really caught that well on the volley and once again Onana was nowhere and it whizzed beyond that far post well again it's another high ball that they're just not able to deal with United Onana's beaten absolutely beaten it's a wonderful strike and it clips the post he's so unlucky Visser there well Garnaccio is coming off and Anthony is coming on. Well, you could argue that Garnaccio's been on the periphery of the game, but you could also argue he's barely had a pass. No, he hasn't really been involved, but neither has Marcus Rashford. I think it was almost a, a flip of a coin to see who would take off. And sometimes it is just the, the biggest star you keep on. But, well, look, let's see if Anthony can make the impact he made in the FA Cup or will he carry on his poor Premier League form well Rashford has scored five in his last nine in the Premier League after only two in the previous 18 so he is some sort of in some sort of form for his club here is McTominay down the line again for Wan-Bissaka and Rashford takes over down the left Hoyland waiting inside the penalty area the one-two has worked between Rashford and Wan-Bissaka but the Attempted ball in is hammered away by Jorgensen, regathered by Dallow. 
And of course, Hoyland has scored in six successive Premier League games. And he almost made it seven in a row before. If he does that here tonight, he'll be the first United player to score in seven successive Premier League games since Ruud van Nistelrooy. And he's had one chance, one pass, basically. Yeah. And that might even have been disallowed, even if he did yes. stick it in the back of the net. You're listening to Brentford against Manchester United on Talk Sport with Now. Don't forget, with Now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like this game live right now, contract free with a Now membership. Search Now Sports. An hour play, terrific atmosphere inside the GTEC. No goals, but I think both sets of supporters really appreciating the importance of this game. And the home fans in particular will have been encouraged by what their team has done, but they'll also be frustrated they've not yet scored. Yes, the home fans that we're looking at the performance and saying that we are the better side at the moment. We yeah, absolutely, we said it a few times. Will they rue this fact that they haven't been able to get that first goal? Now Visser on the halfway line plays the one-two with Tony. Visser now striding forward. Has Yamoliak in support on the edge of the penalty area. Yamoliak takes over now. Looks for Lewis Potter at the far post. The high cross in towards Keane Lewis Potter. And in the end, he rose above Anthony but heads it wide. Yeah, lucky, but again, just fantastic counter play. The pace that they've got. United just not able to live with him at the moment. And Yamoliak, to be fair to him, he. A real good box-to-box -box player, isn't he? If he does get a goal, he'll be Brentford's youngest Premier League scorer, but looks like he wants to try and get in the box as much as possible. Brentford now with 19 shots in the game, three on target, and that has been their big issue. And of course, two of those shots came in the same move with an honest double save early in the second half as the crowd on the far side want a free kick for a challenge on Tony. Nothing given, and United have a throw and don't forget women's football coming up at three o'clock tomorrow on talk sport to the continental league cup final big game as well arsenal against chelsea chelsea going for the quadruple in hemmer hayes his final season in charge they will be in the chair with joe shannon and courtney sweetman kirk alongside her and we have four commentaries from the championship on monday beginning on talk sport two with leicester against norwich followed by huddersfield Travelling to Stoke at three, then at 5.30 on Talk Sport, Ipswich against Southampton, and then Leeds against Hull at eight o'clock. And Game Day Live with Adrian Durham on Talk Sport from one. We'll keep you up to date with all the goals as they go in, as the games begin to run out in both the EFL and the National League. And we will have commentary on every single Premier League game from the midweek round coming up this week on the Talk Sport app, also on Talk Sport. Tuesday night, West Ham against Spurs, Arsenal against Luton on Wednesday, Liverpool against Sheffield United on Thursday. On TalkSport 2, Tuesday, it is Newcastle Everton. Wednesday, Manchester City against Villa. And then on Thursday, it is Chelsea against Manchester United. Download the app, go to the live commentary section, and you can follow all of our games coming up over a very busy conclusion to the Easter weekend and beyond 17 minutes into the second half Brentford nil Manchester United nil but the scoreline does not really tell the story no it does not it really doesn't and the, you know the goal attempts for Brentford now have gone up to 21 and they just went back a little bit the, the Everton game the last league game they United faced 23 shots against City, 27, Fulham, 17, Luton, 22, Villa, 23, West Ham, 22, Liverpool in the Cup, 25. This is not a team that looks compact in any way whatsoever. Now Janel breaking into the penalty area, Jensen with the crossing from the right. It'll be recovered by Tony at the far post. He's got support on the edge of the penalty area from Lewis Potter. He looks to check back onto the left foot. Now inside the penalty area, wide towards Tony again. And it's all the way back to Yamoliuk. And he has really taken the eye so far this evening, but commentators curse as he gives the ball away to McTominay. <laughs> and United have a throw in on this near side. That can happen. But, you know, my, my point is goes back to what you said in the first half about United are where they are and they're chasing a Champions League place, and they are. But they're doing it on moments. You know, lost a lot of games this season. They're conceding a lot of shots. 
is just not good enough. They're a million miles away from where they want to be. But they're hanging on in there in terms of that Champions League race. Well, they conceded 23 shots against Everton and won 2 0. Now, Tony on the volley on the edge of the penalty area. Jensen lifted a high ball forward and Tony hit it on the run first time with the outside of his left foot and it curled just over the top. What a goal that would have been. And you know what? He finds himself just in between Darlow and Maguire and he's stretching and he knows that the defenders, once he takes that touch, are going to be all over him. So he takes it first time. So to do that on his left foot, leaning back, Yes, he's not hit the target, but still got good, a good strike, a good connection on it. Again, very much on the front foot, Brentford. And although United have a porous defence, they've still picked up 19 points in 10 games. Lindelof now with a poor defensive header, but Maguire helps him out to stoop and nod it down towards Wambasaka on the far side. Now Bruno Fernandes, high ball over the top, but it's cut out by Jorgensen. Hammered clear by Ayer. Bruno Fernandes, who is very deep again, with a sumptuous first touch on the far side. Into the path of Hoyland, who gathers. Now McTominay takes over on the edge of the penalty area. Right foot shot from him, but he was never quite set for it. And it's skewed off the outside of his right boot, and it's high and wide. Not really seen a lot of him today, have we? We know he can score goals. He can score very important goals, and Brentford certainly know about that. Late goals. But he's not really got in the game after a good start. Kobe Maynard's not in the game. As I say, in terms of chances, not creating too many, but they're not creating and dictating the tempo of the game either. I think Brian and Buermo will be coming on very soon for Brentford. And that could be a key change as we approach the midpoint of the second half here. Still goalless, Jensen. High over the top, looking for Visser down the right-hand side. Tony makes the run into the penalty area. Visser now has got support from Rudersleff. He can burst into the box now. Pulls it back low towards the near post, looking for Yamaliuk. But again, United will smuggle the ball away, but they've given the ball away. Bruno Fernandes has lost out. Here is Rudersleff again now. Comes in field towards the edge of the penalty area. And now the low cross in from Yamaliuk is deflected behind. It will be another corner. Corner number 12 for Brentford. Oh, it's just incredible, isn't it? You watch this game, how on earth is this nil-nil? And by the nil, Colo, I mean Brentford's so much on top. Could be another defensive injury for United here. Victor Lindelof is down. They've already lost Rafa Varane due to what we presume is an injury tonight because he was their best player in the first time. Yeah, well, at least they've got Lissandro Martinez who can come on. He's not a bad replacement, is he? Yeah, but he's only been available for four of the previous 34 games. And he is coming on now. Picked up a knee injury, the latest injury, on February the 4th. Only three starts since September. But he is undoubtedly a player in the world-class category. And United need him now because I don't think Lindelof will be able to continue. And both of United's starting central defenders in this game could be going off injured I mean, what I would say is if they're, if they're both fit Harry Maguire and Lissandra Martinez is it's difficult to know what, what your best two centre-backs are so I don't think they'll lose out too much it but, is tonight well yeah we'll have to make sure he's up for this of course he had a tough time didn't he this time uh, not this time last year but the, the last time he played at the GTEC I was talking to one of our colleagues downstairs and he said the first half was just like the game in August of 2022 the only difference was Brentford hadn't scored four goals I think he's right but then Lindelof is coming off and Lissandro Martinez comes on and he will have to help his team defend a corner here with 21 minutes to play And it's still Brentford nil, Manchester United nil on Chalksport. The corner in from Jensen. Not a clear at the near post by Hoyland. Yamaliuk will gather now. Four towards Aya. He jabs across into the penalty area and at the near post, Juan Basaka lunges in to concede another corner, which Tony will take this time. And Embuemo and Damsgaard will be on shortly for Brentford well it shows you're on top when your centre half picks the ball up just on the left side inside the, the box and plays it with the outside of his right foot as if he's a winger 
very much on top I think that, listen I understand the Burma. I think it'd be harsh whoever he's not taken off Ivan Tony. it's probably Vissa harsh on Vissa I think he's played really well Jan Elt will take the corner kick 20 minutes to play and this will be another out swinger left footed high to the far post and the overhead kick is over the top inside the six yard area I think it was Keen Lewis Potter who tried the acrobatics but he got right underneath it and another chance goes begging from close range again it's another ball into the six yard box in the corner and Anana not coming anywhere near it there's a headed ball back that's a difficult skill for him to get that one on target he's unlucky there yeah Visser off and Brian Buemo coming on and the other change sees Yamuliak coming off and he'll be replaced by a player who arrived here with really high hopes Mikael Damsgaard but he's had injuries particularly in the first half of this season and this is 15th appearance of the season and 13 of those have come from the bench so Damsgaard and Mbwemo coming on and Visser and Yamulia going off it's a tough one isn't it you know you, you feel like you're on top and you want to go and win the game it's not quite happening in terms of getting that elusive goal versus actually if I bring players on that might need five or so minutes to get used to the pace of the game am I going to give you know a little bit of the action back to United well Damsgaard has given the ball away with his first touch and here is Rashford coming forward now but he does well to get back and recover but again, he's given the ball straight to a United player, Juan Basaka this time. Bruno Fernandes, now Dallo, square towards Anthony. He comes in field, he curls the ball in, oh, it's just wide, left-footed shot from Anthony. This time, Flecken was beaten, and Anthony so close to breaking the deadlock. Wow, that was close, wasn't it? And we were right behind that as well. And you're thinking, no, that's not going to, no, yes, it is, oh, and it doesn't. And he's thinking it might go in as well. Flecken certainly went for it. And Flecken now having to play the ball out, but he's done well. It's a brilliant ball from him to find Collins, who breaks over the halfway line on this near side. And Bruomo takes over. And Bruomo with the cross in, looking for Tony! Ivan Tony has done it! But the flag has been raised, and it won't count. And Bruomo arcing the ball in, and Tony was clattered into as he volleyed the ball into the net and the agony for Tony will continue because the goal has been disallowed well first of all defensively I mean that's tight for offside but it probably just is VAR well Nigel could be here for the next five or six minutes if they decide whether that's offside or not but what I would say first but was of he all, fouled as well, well was he it, pushed over inside the area if it's before offside, he made contact if it's offside that, that's, that comes before yeah. the push that's true so it's all about being offside but first of all Brian and Burmo has given so much space to United defence just dropping off the midfield nowhere near him he's able to just turn look up play the ball wonderful ball to Ivan Tony. and they're just working out now whether it is Martinez keeping him onside or not I think he's just offside but again we haven't been given any lines and the fact that we're looking at it and we're saying we think is tight it is very tight Tony was just on the shoulder of Martinez Stuart Atwell the VAR official is looking on we have a shot of him in his booth at Stockley Park watching this they are putting the lines in now and it's offside it won't count and a brilliant finish from Ivan Tony comes to nothing it's unlucky but I think it is the right decision once the lines came in made it obvious it was tight it was close but it was the right decision. Good call by Simon Long on yeah, the far side. Yeah, absolutely. Really good call. And look, you know what? We have a go at referees. We have a go at the assistants as well. You know, that was tight. He went with that. He got it spot on. Great finish it was from Tony. And, and look, again, they can still feel that, OK, we've hit the bar, we've hit the post, we've scored, but it's not been allowed. Let's go on and win this game. But that is the value of the Mvormo Tony partnership. I know it was offside, but it was a pinpoint delivery. Yeah, look, I, th I think Vista was brilliant as well. No oh, Mbuomo closing down the back pass, which Onana just has to hammer the ball away. Okay. Bruno Fernandes forward towards Anthony, who seemed to leave something there on Collins, and it's back to Flecken. Yeah, I, th I think the Tony Vista 
Tony and Burmo, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a great option to have for Thomas Frank. You have to say now, and Burmo's back. You know, they haven't started a game yet this season, Tony and Burmo. And that, that's kind of like the A team, but I, I like this. I think he's a really good player. He's unlucky not to have scored tonight as well. Of course, he hit the post as well. So that's three times they've they've hit the woodwork. It's, they've been very close, Brentford. 15 minutes to go. Nil-nil. And Burmo on the far side, the right, has support from Jensen. Jensen with the cross in, blocked at the near post by Martinez. Both of United's starting central defenders off injured in this game. It's Maguire and Martinez since half time. Now Jorgensen. And you can hear the home crowd right behind their team in this game. They may regard this as two points dropped if they don't win it at this stage. Damsgaard squeezes it down the line and it's gone behind for a goal kick. You're listening to Brentford against Manchester United on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. 15 minutes to go. United have won eight games by one goal in the final 15 minutes of Premier League games this season. Well, I was going to say daylight robbery. It's not quite daylight now, is it? But if they do get a win out of this, then they certainly wouldn't have deserved it. But you know what? Teams will get what they want in the end, somehow find a way of winning. Well, just think, even though look, Brentford are by far and away the better side here, it's still a very good point for Brentford. It really is. And they'll take a lot of confidence from the performance. But if they can get all three and actually go, what would it be, seven points ahead of Luton in 18? That, that would be points. massive. Is it, would it be five? They'd yeah. get an extra two, wouldn't they, if they did get the win? Sorry, yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry, yeah. It'd be five points if it stays like this, yeah. yeah. High ball played forward. Ayer inside the penalty area. It's flicked on again by Jorgensen. Head tennis continues on the edge of the penalty area. Janot plays it back in. Maguire is there to clear. Janot now gets the ball on the ground. Wide again towards Lewis Potter. He drives in the shot. It was almost deflected off Martinez, but he ducked out and it was clung on by Anana. Anana is then bumped by Tony inside the area. And he goes down appeals for something and very quickly gets back up <laughs> get up get up you know Ivan Tony's put it on you a little bit but it's not a foul and I'll tell you what that was a really good strike that from Lewis Potter and you're right there was a little bit of a deflection from Martinez but it, fortunately for Anana it didn't really go left or right so in the end it came straight to him but very well struck Brentford at home to Brighton on Wednesday you'll be able to hear that game on the TalkSport app download the app Look at the live commentary section. We have so many games coming up on Monday from the EFL Championship, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from the Premier League. All ten midweek games live and exclusive to the TalkSport app with six games across the TalkSport network. Brilliant, isn't it? What a great time to watch football over Absolutely. at Easter weekend. Fantastic day yesterday. Stories everywhere, up and down the leagues. And it will be the same on Monday as well. Flecken now with an early ball over the top. It's allowed to bounce and the shot from Umbuomo comes back off the crossbar. Headed back in field and again Brentford denied by the crossbar. United living incredibly dangerously here. Damsgaard wide on the far side. He's got support from Rudersleigh but it's scrambled away but the Brentford crowd rise all around this stadium. Thomas Frank once again is the auxiliary cheerleader inside the technical area. Straight ball down the middle and United were all over the place. Ah, oh, it was a straight ball, just a dink over the top from Flecken. And he causes so much havoc in there, doesn't he, Ivan, Tony? And the fact is that he was able to just push a few players out the way. It fell to him, Burmo. Does he go on his left foot? He'd be disappointed he's not hit, not hit the back of the net with that. Jensen winding up for another long throw on the far side. In towards the near post, headed up in the air initially. Janat with a miss kick, flick towards goal. Tony challenging with Onana, who clings on well to gather. Casemiro and Mason Mount will be coming on shortly for Manchester United. It will be Mount's first appearance in the Premier League since early November. And of course, Casemiro coming back from a hamstring injury and this would be his 450th league appearance in Europe well I talked about sort of trying to regain the tempo of the 
of the match and, and you get that in the midfield and that's exactly what Ten Hag needs to do. You know, Kobe Maynard, we know what a wonderful talent he is, but I just think it's one game too far and maybe this substitution is 10-15 minutes too late. But still nil-nil at the moment. United could still nick this. Mayno and Rashford coming off. Mount and Casemiro coming on. Currently Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. For the latest odds, head to Betfair, the official betting partner of Talk Sports Premier League coverage right now. Brentford 11-5 to to win. The draw is 10-7 to on. United are 9-2 to to take the victory don't forget Betfair paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout applies to match odds 90 market or markets with the 90 icon all thanks to Betfair 18 plus be gamble aware dot org now Hoyland back towards Dallow 10 minutes to play here at the GTEC on Talksport. Bruno Fernandes with a low shot but again it was a hopeful effort left footed from the edge of the penalty area trundled into the arms of Flecken he quickly bowls it out to this near side and Lewis Potter has support from Damsgaard he's closed down though by McTominay Anthony quickly finds Casemiro lofted over the top but cleared away by Ayer Ayer though was caught late there by Mason Mount and it will be a free kick to Brentford midway inside their own half well it was little and large and I don't think Mason Mount needed to make that challenge Ayer was under pressure he was only going to try and just make a clearance and he's just giving the ball away and giving it back to Brentford. Mason Mount making only his ninth Premier League appearance for Manchester United. It's been a season wrecked by injury. As Aya heads away under pressure from Hoyland midway inside the Brentford half. And now Janel with space down the centre to bring it forward. Right to the challenge of Casemiro. Wide to this near side. And Lewis Potter, the cross high into the penalty area. Anana fumbles it and he gets lucky because it's scrambled away by Wambasaka. Jorgensen pings him a shot. Blocked by McTominay, who was winded by that. And then Tony with the delivery into the penalty area, deflected behind for a corner. You know what? How on earth is this still nil-nil? It's unbelievable. Cross comes in and no one gets onto it. And Anana just he just drops it. He tries to catch it and drops it. Wambasaka well played for reacting first. Got away with that one, the goalkeeper. The cross was deflected, but he had a long time to look long at time. it. Long time. Still got to judge that. And Buomo will take the corner kick on this near side. As we tick into the final, eight minutes here on Talksport. Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. This will be only United's third draw of the season. And Buomo with the delivery towards the near post, flicked on by Tony. It was a very clever effort, but it was always rising over the top. So, you know, it's still brilliant of him to, to somehow get there first. You can see it's another well-worked one, but to try and direct it on target, in the end it goes over. It's on his left foot, it's difficult. It's falling backwards already. 25 attempts, 26 now. Brentford just incredible but only four on target that's the story really yeah but you United know, have had three yeah but Flecken hasn't been tested not properly and, and this is where stats can be misleading you know they, they've hit the woodwork we call, don't call it woodwork anymore but four times and that won't count Brentford have absolutely dominated this game and yet you look at the stats and say well four shots to three on target it looks close no 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 look at the goal attempts 25 to 8 that, that tells more of the story Jorgensen has received a yellow card for a challenge on the far side still complaining towards Simon Hooper and it will be a free kick for United inside their own half with seven minutes to play and they go all the way back towards Anana. lunging in was Tony but he can't cuck out the ball which was played across the penalty area now at the other end Bruno Fernandes was chasing forward Lewis Potter though with the back pass towards Flecken and he clears long downfield. Damsgaard wins the ball in the air. Maguire does just enough to hammer the ball back towards Lissandro Martinez. And he's gifted the ball to Tony. Tony breaks into the penalty area. Tries to go back onto his right foot. Tries to pick out Mbuomo and does neither. And United will clear. Nigel, I don't know what I just saw there. Lissandro Martinez giving the ball away. And Harry Maguire catching up Ivan Tony. And Buomo now on the edge of the penalty area. Caught by Casemiro. And it's a free kick. A yard outside the box, right of centre. 
as Godos and Mopai prepare to come on here for Brentford. My goodness me, I mean, that just shows. You're talking about someone who's been involved in winning World Cups. Just, I don't know what he was doing there. Again, going back to kid stuff. And then Ivan Tony's just not direct enough. He's not quite got the ball under control. So Harry Maguire is able to come back. By the time he brings it onto his right foot, Maguire's there in a situation just to push him away. Good defending, you have to say, from the England international. Tony over the free kick on the edge of the penalty area. And it's so close to the penalty area as well. And Buermo could also hit this left-footed. He's got to. It, it, it favours a left-footer for sure. It'll be Tony or Mbuomo, and we have five minutes to play on Talk Sport in the Premier League on a big Saturday night in West London where it's still Brentford nil, Manchester United nil, but United at the moment are clinging on for a point here. On the balance of play, it's one they would barely deserve, but Brentford have missed so many opportunities in the game. What can Tony and Buermo do here? It's Tony who hits it, and it's an anti-climax right-footed wide of the near post. Well, he's just pulled rank there, and he shouldn't have done. You know, Brian and Burma, it favours the left footer. and go either way. For him to sneak that round the wall, and let's face it, he has done that before in his first game when he came back, but that angle was even tighter. And the wide players are being changed for Brentford. Ruder Slep. And Lewis Potter are coming off. And Godos and Mopai are coming on. So Mopai will play, presumably, on the right. He's just having words with Matthias Jensen. And Godos will come on to try and attack down the left. Well, we'll have to wait and see what time the formation Thomas Frank is wanting to play. But what you can definitely say is this is attacking. And he's going to try and go for it. Cleared downfield by Onana. Now Casemiro. And the way United's season has gone, you just wouldn't put it past them to nick a winning goal here. <laughs> if, if they were to nick a winning goal, they should be embarrassed, really. But look in the paper, it would say... No, it wouldn't matter. It absolutely wouldn't matter. Now Jorgensen hammers the ball away. wan -Bissaka with... The header over the top, it drops to Mount on the far side. Now wan -Bissaka down the left in front of those United fans. He can attack the penalty area, challenged by Mbuermo. Wants the corner kick, but a goal kick's been given. And the United fans on the far side are absolutely furious. And we have three minutes of normal time to play. It's not been 4-0 this year for Eric Ten Hag, but it's not been good either. No, listen, I don't think the performance actually has been that different from the game here last season just the scoreline Brentford have absolutely dominated this game as I say they've hit the woodwork four times Anana's made some really good saves Flecken yes there's been some shots on target but they've all been really at him apart from that one there was that one opportunity wasn't it where we think it was still it probably would have been offside but we Point don't know shot, yeah Tony's had a goal disallowed he's hit the post and Buemo's hit the bar We've also seen Brentford hit bar and post on two other occasions. Tony now flicks on for Mopai inside the penalty area. Dallow gets there first. Dallow goes down. Mopai is also there clutching his face, so the referee will have to stop play here. And I'm not sure what happened there. Dallow was the first player to go down, but I think he maybe clipped the head of Mopai because he's struggling as well. I don't think we're ever quite sure what happens when Neil Mopai is on the pitch. And just oh um, yeah. Uh, yeah it was a uh, I mean look Dalo's the one who's kind of had his head he's back. butted him hasn't yeah, he <laughs> from the back accidentally of, his head. of course it's not a foul from, from Neil Melpai well this could be interesting a drop ball inside the United penalty mm. area but he's no angel but I, I think it was no. given as a foul well Melpai's receiving treatment so too is Dalo and we have just over a minute of normal time to play here I think Dallas being clever actually he's the one whose head went back it's the back of his head rather than Neil Melpai's front of his I think that would hurt Melpai more well Melpai's being patched up 
So if it stays like this, United would remain sixth in the table, eight points behind Spurs and 11 points behind Villa with a game in hand. But really, they would be too far adrift to really have an impact, you feel. Four points clear of West Ham, who, of course, lost today at Newcastle. 4-3, Newcastle would be a further point back. And at the bottom, Brentford would move on to 27 points. Everton 25, Forest 22, Luton 22, Burnley 18 and Sheffield United 50. Big point for Burnley that today, wasn't it, at the bridge? Huge. I mean, fair play to them. And I actually didn't think there was a penalty for, for Chelsea either. And they are not out of it. Four the, points adrift. They're drift. not now. They're not. With they're eight not. games to play. The, the, the win against um, Brentford before the break. The draw against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Got a conference to take, down to 10 men as well. They're sneaking their way back into it. There will be a minimum of nine more minutes. So don't go Good. anywhere. And uh, there is still treatment here for Dallo and Mopai following the clash of heads inside the United penalty area. Of course, Everton losing again to another late goal, an own goal this time at Bournemouth. Forest and Palace with the 1-1 draw, probably of more use to Palace than Forest. Sheffield United blowing it, really. 3-1 up with four minutes to play at home. Fulham came back to draw Rodrigo Muniz in added time. And then Son with another heartbreak moment for Luton. You think how many points Luton have given away late in games? I, I was at the Bournemouth game. Say no more. Well, they've done it at home to Liverpool earlier this season. They were winning that game late on and only drew. And it's... I'm not, I'm not trying to... <laughs> pile on the agony for fair just realised we were talking in face presence here so. I wonder why Faye was only looking at us there but look they've had their chances more Mate. than any other team down there yeah absolutely which suggests they could get it right and they well, could pull themselves up they're, they're still very much in the fight you have to say because they have that almost that, that cause feeling the community that what's gone on in their club the last decade and, and they always knew that you know they would be in for a fight from the very start of the season. I don't think Burnley quite knew it. Forest weren't hoping for it, and Everton weren't either. Brentford certainly not. Luton, Luton been ready for this. And those games coming up in succession in April for Brentford. Sheffield United at home, Luton away, Everton away. They could be the games to decide it. Well, Dallow's had his head patched up so too as Mopai they'll be back on the field shortly we're into two minutes of nine added minutes and now Jensen has found Mbuermo with pace down the right hand side he'll break into the penalty area and Buermo heading towards the byline delivers the cross in towards Tony he goes down under a challenge it's cleared away as far as Janel the shot though is blocked and Tony will try and get back to his feet Anthony is the player who gets the ball away Mount finding McTominay United now have the opportunity to break but Mount was just clipped and it will be a free kick given to United inside the centre circle as Mopai and Dallow eventually come back onto the field of play yeah and I actually think very clever play from you now that should be a yellow card very clever United on the counter attack an opportunity arising just pulls Mason Mount back now they're able to get back into position Bruno Fernandes with the free kick inside the centre circle. We played three of the nine minutes, but we barely played any of the first of the two of the nine minutes due to the injury break as Aya challenged by Hoyland on the far side. And the ball has gone straight out of play for a United throw-in. Nobody's leaving early. Did you drive or did you get the train? What is the last train home? Me? I drove. I so drove, yeah. 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 But apparently the last train back to Manchester left at 8.02, so good luck. <laughs> Wambasaka will take the throw in on the far side. And now Bruno Fernandes. And now Wambasaka again finding Casemiro midway inside the Brentford half the first time ball forward is flicked on by Mount on the edge of the penalty area comes back out to Wambasaka. good ball to find Bruno Fernandes in towards McTominay headed away Anthony nods it down Casemiro looking to turn Mount though has been robbed by Jensen and Mopai can bring the ball clear for Brentford finding Tony on the halfway line holding off Dallow and Anthony Godos 
plays it forward for Damsgaard, slices the ball up in the air, but it goes straight back towards Godos. Didn't mean that. Godos has then been fouled by a retreating McTominay, and Brentford will have another opportunity to pump the ball high into the box with five minutes of added time to play. And that's exactly what they will do because they've caused havoc all night with that ball into the box. They've been a lot better than that. They've played really good football. They counter-attacked really well, but when they have just stuck it in there, United have struggled to deal with them. We'll get reaction from both clubs down in the tunnel following this game as well as Janelt comes forward now, drives in a cross which was blocked at the near post by Bruno Fernandes and it will be another throw in for Brentford, another opportunity maybe for Jensen to hurl this ball high. Tick, ticking towards the 96th minute here on Talk Sport. Still Brentford nil, Manchester United nil. Brentford have had 29 efforts on goal in the game. But they've not scored with any of them. Is this the moment? Jensen making use of all the room he can on this near side. Hurls it in towards the near post. It almost drops for Ayer inside the area. Janelt challenging, but now Anthony can bring the ball away for United over the halfway line. Mason Mount is in support excellent recovery challenge though from Godos on this near side but Hoyland working hard to win it back here is Bruno Fernandes wide towards Anthony again now Hoyland again Bruno Fernandes finding Casemiro good ball from him Anthony now down the right the cross into the penalty area is blocked at the near post and then he breaks for Hoyland here is Casemiro and now Mason Mount and Mason Mount has done it can you believe it in the 97th minute Mason Mount scores his first goal for Manchester United and it's stolen three points at the G-Tech Community Stadium Brentford cannot believe it 29 attempts on goal and it looks as though they are going to lose by a goal to nil United the Premier League's moment team and Mason Mount has come up with a massive moment there well, I'm just absolutely speechless and I'm looking at pictures of Thomas Frank and he's got a smile on his face because he cannot believe what he's just seen. And we've mentioned that. 30 goal attempts now from Brentford. It says four to five with United, that being that one on target, but that does not tell the story. United have absolutely got away with this, but it doesn't matter. Not in terms of the results, not in terms of the chase of the Champions League, but I think it shows that they are a million miles away from where Ten Hag, where Sir Jim Ratcliffe, where the United fans want them to be. This is very much papering over the cracks. But at this moment in time, if you're a United fan, who cares? This will be the 13th win this season in added time. The ninth time they've won after 75 minutes. The fourth time they've won in added time. They keep getting away with it. They do. And you know what? The fact if you keep on doing it, then there's a reason. Your fitness, physically, mentally. But my goodness me, if this was 4-1, that would probably be about right. But do you know what, Nigel? I'm really pleased for Mason Mount. Tough time. He's been a very good Chelsea player. He's a good player. guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's a really good player. And he's had a tough time with his short United career so far. Now in Buermo with a cross into the penalty area breaks wide towards the far side Jensen on the overlap down the right launches the cross in headed away by Mount there are Brentford fans around us looking dumbfounded they are absolutely stunned but here is Tony inside the penalty area twisting and turning towards the byline pulls it back and Ayer is there to equalise Christopher Ayer in the 99th minute may have rescued a point for Brentford Manchester United took the lead but they were unable to hold on and the GTEC stadium erupts and that is the least that Thomas Frank's team deserve Brentford won Manchester United won and you're right now you have to say might because there still could be another goal you just don't know but one thing about this Brentford side they will never give up absolute brilliant play from Ivan Tony. he brought the ball out of the sky with a wonderful first touch he didn't panic he's inside the box he went past two players he cut the ball back and there's your big centre half to stick it in the back of the net brilliant from Tony. fully deserved from Brentford 
Only Christopher Ayers, second goal for Brentford, but that is the least they deserve, let's be honest. Uh, I'm telling you, this is a 4-5-1 game. United have got away with a point, but they'll take it now. It's a game they should have won, though. Game they may still win. As Mount on the far side, challenged by Jorgensen. Well, United scored twice in added time to win the game back in October when Brentford led 1-0 for so long. Both teams have scored in added time here. Nigel, I'm saying it's a 4-5-1 game, but you're absolutely right. United score so late on, they have to see this out. They have to get the win and get all three points. And whether you're, you're stealing the points, or whether you're, it's daylight robbery, call it what you want. Who cares? You come away with the win. You don't concede when you've just gone up in the, what was it, the 96th minute? Wow. The goals have been scored, I think, in 90 plus 7 and 90 plus 9. Mount and then Ayer. And United coming forward again with Mason Mount. Their fans now. Don't, don't know whether to laugh or cry but in many ways they've seen it all before and Mount has won a corner now and we're into the 101st minute it's a good job we're on the air till 10.30 really we'll try and get some reaction for you before the end of the programme otherwise Adam Cattrall will be along with Fight Night later on tonight on Talk Sport the corner high into the penalty and Maguire challenging for the header and it took a deflection off Jorgensen it goes over the top for another United corner they could have won it there again well it's 100 plus minutes now isn't it so we're getting close to the last kick of the game and the fact that United have the corner this could well be the moment Bruno Fernandes will take it 102 minutes on the clock high into the penalty area Mount will have to control at the far post goes back towards Wambasaka delivered in high Martinez managing to nod the ball down but he's penalised for pulling down Janelt and it will be a free kick for Brentford they want to take it quickly hammered downfield by Collins but the referee I think will just halt this now McTominay tried to delay the restart the Brentford players weren't happy about that it was hammered clear by Collins and the referee will have at least a word with McTominay and may well show him a yellow card well, he's not wanting to come back, is he? The referee's calling him and he's just ignoring him. It's got to be a yellow. Well, if he does that, he'll definitely get booked. It's got to be. Well, McTominay is refusing to come towards the referee and Simon Hooper's saying, look, we're not going to carry on until I've shown you the yellow card. And Simon Hooper, who is the spitting image of our producer here, Carl Riley, here tonight... <laughs> has shown another yellow card <laughs> how do you know that's not Carl down there well rather like Carl he's kept very good control of this it's been a good game and it's been well refereed it has it has we're what 12 minutes now into what was 9 minutes 102 minutes gone it's been a heck of a game loved it Neil Mopai was also shown a yellow card during that as well there's a shock now Godos heads the ball down it's controlled by Janel squeeze further wide towards Collins now Damsgaard down the right low into the penalty area for Tony good challenge though on the edge of the box for Maguire Damsgaard though has it back Brentford are streaming forward here but Bruno Fernandes does well to play it back to Anana. he hammers it clear and we still play on Jensen nods it forward Maguire heads away McTominay beaten to it by Janel and now Godos coming forward down the right did the ball take a deflection of Dallo? no it didn't it will be a United throw in and we are still going to play on for now 104 minutes now thrown in field hooked forward by Bruno Fernandes Jorgensen goes all the way back towards Flecken he will just hammer it downfield but it's a miss kick from him never got off the ground but he does find Mbuermo on the halfway line and now Jensen launches it wide towards Tony. is this the final chance of the game he's got Godos in support Godos now will attack the penalty area down the left. The cross though is deflected off Dallo. Headed away by McTominay. Tony wins it back. Now Godos needs to get the ball into the area. 
Collins, challenged though by Anthony, but it breaks for Damsgaard. Damsgaard now, low into the area for Mopai. He's onside, hammers the ball across, and it's cleared away by Juan Basaka. Janel tries to win it back. It's brought clear by Casemiro. And now Bruno Fernandes, releasing Casemiro over the halfway line. Doesn't quite have the pace to get there, but Anthony might. But the ball forward to him is cut up by Ayer. And there goes the full-time whistle. What an extraordinary game with a remarkable finish. 1-1 in the end, a match which was utterly dominated by Brentford. But they fell behind in the 97th minute. Mason Mount scoring his first goal for Manchester United. It looked at that stage that Brentford would be denied at least a point they richly deserved. But United unable to hold on. Christopher Ayer slotting in after great work by Ivan Tony in the 99th minute to equalise. And it's a point which ultimately is a good deal more used to Brentford at the bottom than Manchester United chasing the Champions League at the top. Full time, Brentford 1, Manchester United 1. I don't even know how to catch my breath after that. What an absolutely bonkers 100 and however many minutes it was of football. <laughs> I've got to tell you what um, an elderly Brentford fan said to me as he climbed the stairs. He got me to take my headphones off and he said, that is the luckiest get out of jail win I've ever seen any team come and play Brentford, either at Griffin Park or here. And then literally... <laughs> Aya goes down the other end and scores and he goes, oh, I better get back down and <laughs> races down the stairs to take his seat back again. That was just crazy. But I think the Brentford fans leaving here have got their heads down because it must feel like a defeat after 31 shots at Manchester United's goal. I lost count of the amount of times they hit the crossbar or the post. And the chances that they had were just incredible and it just didn't look like it was going to go for them. But a point is still important, but it could have been a win and it should have been a win, Scott. Do you know what, Faye? First and foremost, again, what, what a great game to end what has been a great day in the Premier League and coming off the back of, of the international break as well. You know, we really want it to be exciting at the top end. We've got three teams fighting for the title. We've got teams fighting for Champions League. And obviously we've got teams battling against relegation. Brentford here, if they play like this for the rest of the season, 100% they stay up. The question is, can they repeat this from now to the end of the season? Because don't forget, before this game, there was 14 defeats out of the previous 18. Yeah. So, look, Thomas Frank, I know what you're saying about it feels like a bit of a defeat. It was a 4-5-1 game, but I, I would think there's so much positivity to take from this. I really do. And yes, it, they, they nearly lost it. But the way they came back, even then, and didn't give up, and brilliant from Ivan Tony and your big centre-half finishing like he was your, your centre-forward. But that, that was 31 attempts. That, that was a brilliant performance from Brentford. As I say, they didn't come away with all three points, but if I was a Brentford player or Brentford fan, I'm thinking, that was really good. We've got to keep that going. And if we produce it week in, week out, we're staying up. Thomas Frank has just led his players round to a standing ovation from the Brentford fans that are left here. He still had a smile on his face. I mean, he had a smile on his face when they won one nil down, but I think it was a, a, a wry, roll your eyes Ironic, kind of smile. Yeah. Um, but the players' heads were down and he was like, no, this is good, this is good, because they've got to keep this momentum going. They've got a big game midweek on Wednesday, which you can hear on the app against Brighton they can definitely survive on performances like this but they've got to be more clinical well, well they have um, and I, I wouldn't even say it was brilliant Manchester United defending I, I think at times it was R Rafa Varane certainly in the first half did really well and you know Maguire when he came on putting some important headers away but they hit the post four times yeah. you know post stroke crossbar four times and, and the stats won't show that you know, it, it's 5-5 five, five shots on goal. That was a million miles away from that. And I was saying that to, to, to Nige. Look at the attempts, 31 to 11. That tells you your story of yeah. what, you, what we saw here. And United, look, they'll be gutted. And they'll... Whether it's indiscipline, whether it's a lack of concentration, once you score that goal in the 97th minute, you need to win. You have to... We talked about this being a must-win game. 
you know, with Spurs coming back from behind, getting a late winner, Villa, you know, cruising pretty much to a, a good win against Wolves. They needed to win this game. And they would have completely got away with that. And your mate who tapped you on the shoulder and said that, that I've never seen anything like that before was absolutely spot on. But they needed to find a way to keep that clean sheet and they didn't. You know, that, even the point, but even if it was a win, that would have papered over the cracks. This just wasn't good enough from the Manchester United team. And as I say, in terms of Eric Ten Hag, he's very much on trial from now to the end of the season. And, you know, that wasn't good enough. That they've, wasn't a good enough performance. They've been papering over the cracks all season they have and kind of getting away with it not always getting away with it but recently getting away with it they got away with it today they shouldn't mm. have come away with a point today on that performance not a chance is this as far as you're concerned is this a bit you know you look at a little bit of the old school luck that Manchester United kind of used to have but at least you know <laughs> I'm not comparing this Manchester United side with the treble winners for example but you know the kind of Fergie time part of Manchester United, they still manage to kind of do that, don't they? But this performance, this group of players, they don't deserve Champions League football, do they? No, um, well, look, you, you, you deserve, you get what you deserve at the, at the end of the season. If they finish in the Champions League place, then that means that they've gone on to the end of the season on a fantastic winning run, which I don't think they will from what we've seen. Look, let's be fair, Fergie time, and you know that wasn't luck. That was just sheer mentality of never giving up and saying, we are going to go right to the very end. Mm. And you have to say again, if you do something repeatedly, then clearly they have something that is positive in terms of that mentality of, of never giving up. But just in terms of controlling the game, you know, it wasn't just the fact of Brentford looked dangerous and were just knocking high balls into the box and you know they, they couldn't handle the height of Brentford, both defensively and offensively. They were outplayed tonight, Manchester United. You know, that wasn't good enough. And maybe those substitutions in central midfield could have come a little bit earlier because they were losing the tempo of the game. But you know, I, 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 I cannot give you so enough credit to Brentford for that performance. And then to go 1-0 down in the 96th minute, 97th minute, and you're thinking, that's it, and then not give up and go again. Absolutely brilliant from them. But I, ultimately, I don't see Manchester United finishing in the Champions League place on this performance and what we've seen all season. They need to suddenly turn it around as if almost title-winning form. And I just don't see it from this, this United side. Well, they side. might do it against Chelsea on Thursday. That's live on TalkSport 2. I'm there. Two. I'm doing it. <laughs> Lucky you for that. We're going to talk about Chelsea's two-all draw against 10-man Burnley uh, very, very shortly. I just want one quick answer. You, you mentioned it in commentary, and it was exactly what I was thinking. Mason Mount not played since November, like just had a, such a torrid time of it since he joined Manchester United. His first goal for them. Pleased for him as a player, coming on as a substitute and doing that. What does that show about his mentality? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he went for a lot of money. Um, I still would have loved to have seen him in the Chelsea shirt personally, but he, he clearly fell out with the owners in terms of the negotiations of the contract. He's gone to United. First couple of games didn't work the midfield that was happening and then he got injured and he was out injured for a long time it's been tough for him but one thing I would say is and I don't know him I know people who do know him and have worked with him and they say not only is he a really good technical player but he's a very strong character yeah he is a strong and player. he's a really good guy I mean not that that really means anything but you kind no, of want does. good it guys means, it no, means a lot not on a football pitch you know it's not about being a good guy it's about being a good player but you want good guys to do well but, but he's he's ticks all the boxes mm. and yeah absolutely really pleased him and hopefully this is the start of his Manchester United career your hardest job of the night it's time for us to pick our man of the match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car man of the match on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day I, I don't want to be in your position, Scott, which is why I'm very grateful I'm not. <laughs> Who on earth are you going to pick? Well, look, yeah, you, you have to give, first of all, a Brentford player, and I think the worst Brentford player got at least a 7.5 tonight. Nice. But I just think Ivan Tony was sensational. He led the line. Uh, he never gave up. Played That, that equaliser was all about him. Could easily have got a hat-trick on another day with a bit of luck. Uh, because he did everything right, then he would have had a hat-trick. But I, I just thought a sensational form. And if he carries on that now after the way he played against Belgium, as much as you want Ollie Watkins to do well as well, if there's only one other striker that's being taken, he's in the box seat right now. Yeah, feels like it. So Ivan Tony was our man of the match from today's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car.